Uh, good morning to one and all. I am uh, Dr. Atul Sorbagar from Dada Patil Rajale Arts, Commerce and Science College, Adhra Adhra. I would like to extend my sense gratitude to all, all the participants and I would like to welcome and thanks to all the delegates, participants, those are present on the screen and off the screen for this international event. I am happy for your kind response as C uh, uh, and to deliberate this, uh, this that is a aquaculture for rural development. I, I welcome uh, all of you on the half of the three college that is Department of Zoology uh, from late Ramesh Varputkar Art Science Commerce College, Parbani Sonpet, uh, Kalika Devi Arts Commerce Science College, Shirur Kasar, Bid, Milia Art Science and Management College, Hello. Science College, join. and I welcome to all of you. In, in now that I, case, what will do? I, I welcome the all delegates and participants. Okay. I request Dr. Tanvir Patan sir to give the initial remarks for the conference. Am I audible, sir? Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning to one and all. First of all, on the behalf of Organizing Committee of International Conference on Aquaculture for Rural Development, organized under MOU between Department of Zoology, Kalika Devi Art Science and Commerce College, Shirul Kasa, District Guild, affiliated to Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Marathwara University, Aurangabad, Department of Zoology, late Ramesh Varpurkar, Art Science and Commerce College, Stone Pit, District Parbhani, Affiliated to Swami Ramanan Sirs Marathwada University, Nande, Department of Zoology, Dada Patil Rajoy Arts, Science and Commerce College, Adinath Nagar, Taluka Pathradi, District uh, Ahmad Nagar, affiliated to Savitri Bhai Kuli uh, yes, Pune University, Pune, and Milia Arts, Science and Management College, Deed, affiliated to Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Marathwada University, Aurangabad. We would like to welcome all delegates participating for this international event. Their friends and delegates, we all know about, about the hunger and malnutrition remain among the most devastating problems facing the world's poor. The FAO State of Food Security report said that developing nations are not getting enough food to lead normal and healthy active life. Food demand and in particularly the demand for fish has continued to rise and it forecasted that expanding population and changing eating habit will make doubling of food output impurity in the next 30 years. This demand mainly has to be for the local food production system. Aquaculture contributes to poverty, alienation, and it provides employment to millions of people, both in sector itself as well as in support services. It also generates income and as the price for most of the food commodity falls, fish prices are expected to rise, reflecting the imbalance between demand and supply. With this, I would like to extend my sense of gratitude to the distinguished guests. Please allow me to express my sincere appreciation to Professor Dr. Kusum Arunachalam, Professor and Head, Environment and Natural Resources, Doon University, Kedarpur, Dehradun, Uttarakhand, India. Dr. Binay Kumar Chakroti, former Professor, Department of Treasury, Bangladesh, and Dr. Dilip Kumar Jha, Professor and Head, Department of Aquaculture and Faculty of Animal Science, Veterinary Science, Fishery, Agriculture, Forestry University, Rampur, for joining this international event. I welcome all of you and hope today's event will serve as a catalyst for strengthening international cooperation on transfer of innovative expertise. Today, we have about nearly about 100 participants joining this webinar and participants come together here to discuss on aquaculture for the rural development. 
i hope that we will able to conclude certain agenda in this webinar i am sure that we will have a fruitful and rewarding exchange in this webinar and wish very success to this important webinar i look forward to learning outcome of this webinar before i take my leave of you i would like to remind you especially our moderator to stick to our time schedule not late over any session i sincerely hope that you will enjoy today's debate and networking thank you for your participation thank you very much thank you uh thank you dr tanvir patan sir who is the convener of this international conference uh, on agriculture for rural development thank you for uh, giving the initial remark i welcome uh, dr rajdar temkar sir principal dada patil rajdar art science and commerce college adirat nagar uh, to uh, to give the welcome address over to sir sir uh, please unmute your mics first okay yes sir. yes sir. good morning to one and all today is a one day international conference on aquaculture for rural development icrd 2022 on 7th may under the mou between the department of zoology to celebrating azadi ka amrut mohotsav and to bring together scholars students and administ administrators from the various countries and to discuss theoretical and practical issue in all fields of aquaculture and its role in rural development good morning to first of all i am thankful honorable sri uh, jaydatt shir sagar anna secretary adar shikshan samstha bid and uh, honorable sri uh, my shikshan samstha president appa saheb radale ata kaka president dada pal radale shikshan samstha adinath nagar honorable sri Uh, परमेश्वर कदम प्रेसिडेंट हनुमान शिक्षण प्रसारक मंडल सोनपेट इनकरेज फॉर द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन द वन डे नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन इनोवेशन इन बेसिस साइंस फॉर सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट आई एम थैंकफुल टू आवर एग्जीक्यूटिव ट्रस्टी ऑनरेबल एम एल ए मोनिका ते राजीव राजले ट्रस्टी राहुल राजले कॉलेज डेवलपमेंट कमिटी चेयरपर्सन मिस्टर शिवाजीराव राजले and secretary honorable j r pawar for guide us to develop the scientific environment for student from rural background in college campus like pathardi as our founder chairperson let dada pil radale said that education for weaker sections of the society especially girls child and this is also our motto we forward this message at act last 13 years till date and future too i would like to extend my sense of uh, gratitude to inaugurated on this conference professor uh, dr kusum arunachalam professor and head school of environmental and natural resources dun university uh, kedapuram dehradun uttarakhand professor dr dilip kumar jha professor and head of department aquaculture faculty of animal science veterinary science and fisheries agriculture and forestry university rampur chitpavan nepal this topic is aquaculture for rural development in nepal i welcome the next speaker dr banya kumar chakraborty former professor department of fisheries mr mr babun roman dhaka bangladesh this topic of role of Uh, aquaculture for rural development in bangladesh i would like to welcome and thanks to all the delegates participants those are present on the screen and off screen for this international event i am happy for your kind response as a see that near about uh, maximum registration was done by student teacher research scholars from all over the india it is my duty to congratulate my good friends principal dr vd satpute principal dr vs khandare sir 
and uh, principal dr ilyas fazil sir for kind support for this event organized under mou between department of zoology of the late ramesh varpurkar art commerce science college sonpet district parbani appellated to swami ramanand tirth marathwada university nanded department of zoology kalika devi arts commerce science science college shirur district bid milia arts science and management science college bid appellated to dr baba sahab ambedkar marathwada university aurangabad and department of zoology dr dada pilar adale arts science commerce and college adinathnagar taluka patali district ambadnagar appellated to saitibai phule pune pune university pune i hope in future you actively conducts organize the scientific events workshop for students farmers to exchange the ideas in international platforms also i am sure that we will have fruitful and a rewarding exchange in this conference i wish you every success and i look forward to learning outcome of the conference it is my duty to congratulate conveners and heads of the department zoology dr t s patan sir from kalika devi arts commerce and science college shirur bid dr santosh ranakam from late rameshwar purkar arts science college sonpet dr atul chorpagar from my college dada pilar adale arts science commerce college adinath nagar taluka patadi i sincerely hope you will enjoy today's debate and networking thank you for your participation thanks you are not audible atul atul sir you are unmute uh, you are muted yes sir now yeah, yeah you are audible yeah thank you sir uh, principal dr rajda temkar sir for giving the welcome address now i request dr mukundraj baburao patil from late ramesh varpudkar arts commerce and science college sonpet district parbani to introduce the chief guest dr mukundraj patil sir over to you yes thank you sir good morning uh, everyone uh, myself dr mukundraj patil and he, i am here to introduce chief guest of this uh, international conference on aquaculture for rural development dr Pro professor kusum arunachalam ma'am uh, ma'am has completed her master and doctoral degree in a subject botany she had post doctoral fellowship in plant micro interaction at university of herenberg germany man has 24 years of te teaching experience and 27 years of research experience she has uh, also held various positions in the dune university dehradun notably uh, she was vice chancellor Uh, during august 2017 to january 2018 uh, she was dean for various streams from 2013 to 2019 uh, ma'am has uh, ma'am was director of iqac dune university from 2013 to 2018 uh, ma'am has uh, ma'am is a head of school of environment and natural resource dune university dehradun since 2000 13 during uh, this academic journey uh, ma'am has published uh, 114 research papers uh, edited two books and uh, 13 chapters in the books uh, she has published 15 articles are published in conference proceeding uh, she is a research supervisor and 15 students has awarded phd under her prime guidance and seven students are working uh, to pursue phd uh, ma'am has completed 14 research projects funded by various funding agencies um, uh, ma'am has very decent uh, research record uh, she has 22250 citations and 
24H index, which indicates uh, quality of uh, her research work. Considering this decent contribution, uh, ma'am has received different awards and honors from government and various academic bodies. National Young Woman Bioscientist Award uh, uh, was uh, given by DBT, that is Department of Biotechnology, Government of India in 2005. Women Scientist Award was given by Society of Science and Climate Change and Environmental Sustainability in 2020. Commonwealth Youth Silver Award was given in 2007 and 8 by Commonwealth Secretariat Chand Chandigarh. Women Bioscientist Award was given by Academy of Plant Sciences of India in 2018. Best Woman Bioscientist Award was given by Pearl Foundation for Educational Excellence in 2017. Governor Research Award was given in 2020 for Best Research Paper. Uh, Nari Shakti Samman, uh, this award was given in 2021 by the Society of Biological Science and Rural Development, Lucknow. Uh, Ma'am is a recognized fellow of different scientific bodies like International Society of Tropical Ecology, Varanasi, India, National Environmental Science Academy, New Delhi, Academy of Forest and Environmental Science, National Institute of Ecology, Jaipur, International Society of Environmental Botanist, Scholar Academy and Scientific Society. She is also working as an expert for UGC NET in environmental studies. And uh, Ma'am is a member coordinator for NAC Bangalore. Such a great versat uh, versatile and multidimensional personality is a chief guest for our today's program. And I feel very proud and pleased to introduce uh, um, Ma'am here. Uh, thanks to organizers giving me a chance and opportunity to introduce ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mukundraj Patil, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bapanao Patil, for, uh, for uh, thank you, ma a nice intro introduction of our uh, inaugurator and chief guest of today's uh, international conference on aquaculture for rural development. Now I welcome and uh, request today's inaugural inaugurator and Chief Guest, Professor Kusum Arunacharan Madam, to give inaugural address. Thank you for such a nice intro. Okay, so a very warm good morning to all the organizers and Dr. Rajat Kamter, Principal of the College, Dr. Chora Pagul, Dr. Baparao Patil, Dr. Santosh Ranakam, and the Speakers of the different session, Professor Dilip Kumar Jha, who is from Nepal, and Dr. Vinay Kumar Chakravarti, who is uh, speaking on aquaculture for rural development, and he will be sharing the experiences from Bangladesh. So it's in fact a pleasure for me to uh, be a part of this very important conference, which is International Conference on Aquaculture for Rural Development. And I must say that uh, the collaborative workshop, which is in the line of the national education policy also, where the uh, what people are talking about that we have to move to the collaboration and we can't do anything on silo. So this is a real uh, good experience that so many people from different colleges have joined hands and are part of this uh, international conference on aquaculture for rural development. So as uh, during the introduction, Dr. Uh, Jara Bagar has already pointed out, sorry, Dr. Patil has pointed out that uh, my background is from botany, though so I'm not totally from the aquaculture field. But yes, I have been working on the ecosystems, on the environment, natural resource management. And uh, recently we are also looking at how uh, the, what are the different micro algae, the micro alga in the Himalayan state of Uttarakhand and how this micro algae can be utilized for the biofuel production as well as for the, uh, uh, for this uh, wastewater treatment of different industrial wastewater 
which is available so i thought like uh, since we already have two uh, speakers who will be speaking on the aquaculture for rural development so i thought let me speak on a slightly different aspect that is restorative aquaculture its potential and future so this is uh, going to be the top topic of my talk so before going to the uh, concept of what is restorative, uh, restorative aquaculture and how it is important uh, what kind of role it will be playing in our uh, aquaculture sector so i would just like to give a brief background like what is uh, how important the uh, aquaculture sector is for, for our country so if you talk about indian fisheries in our uh, culture our tradition this has been embedded uh, to a very large extent and we can see that this particular shloka from the which says that keshav dhrit means sharira jay jagdish hari so the god also is an incarnation of fish so how important the fisheries is in our indian culture so this slide is just trying to depict that so uh, just i would like to give a brief snapshot of what is uh, this uh, how important the aquaculture sector is for our country we know that uh, nutrition it's provide uh, it is a very good source of nutrition protein and we are also looking after the micro nutrient nowadays that the fisheries and the aquaculture can also provide uh, micronutrient for the growing human population then we have livelihood export activity marine fisheries mariculture coastal aquaculture inland fisheries cold water fisheries fresh water aquaculture so we have so many diverse sector which are available for uh, this aquaculture as uh, in our country in india especially so capture fisheries to aquaculture that is again very important aspect and then we also have uh, about 14 million fishers and farmers which are directly dependent on fisheries and aquaculture sector so just a brief uh, background like what is uh, the what is the indian fishery scenario we have a coastline of about 8118 km which includes some 3600 fishing villages then we have a eco ecological economical ecological zone which is about 2.03 million square kilometer we have a large continental shelf which represents 0.506 million square kilometer we have rivers and canals then we have reservoirs we have ponds tanks we have oxbow lakes derelict waters and then we also have brackish water so this is Uh, how uh, rich we are in terms of the potential for fisheries and aquaculture in indian context then this uh, this slide is just giving a snapshot of like what is the fish jump plus resources of india we have cold water where we have about 73 fishes we have warm water 544 fishes we have brackish water 143 species then we have marine uh, uh, where we have around 1440 species and in total we have about 2200 species so as we know that india is a mega biodiverse country in terms of the terrestrial biodiversity but the fish bar fish diversity is also equally rich in our country and just like the other form of biodiversity then we also have uh, the global position uh, we are third in the fisheries after china indonesia and maybe now we are second second in aquaculture and then we have per capita fish availability of about uh, 8.54 kg based on 56% of population as we have in form of fish eating and then we have annual export earnings which is about 6.12 lakhs per uh, tons and it which is equivalent to 8000 crores and that is equivalent to 1.85 billion us dollar so this is uh, uh, some background and then you have indian fish facts 4.7% of global production then we have about uh, 7 billion us dollar current price so these are the 18% national agriculture exports 2.5% of global trade so how uh, well we are dependent on the aquaculture for our economic development and even for the rural development this is some of the cold water fishes because i am speaking from the uttarakhand so we have uh, Uh, these two important fishes here mahashil and trout and they are facing the problem of uh, i mean uh, the uh, number is declining their the diversity is in threat because of large scale of this uh, dam uh, built up of the dam in the uttarakhand and we know that a large number of dams are being constructed on the river ganges the bhagirathi alaknanda and then these two important fishes in the uttarakhand are uh, really in the facing the in the uh, endangerment so there is lot of uh, challenges like how to i mean how 
how to conserve these important species. So they have also set up a coal fisheries institute is there at Mukteshwar near Nalital. So they are working on conservation and development of this Mahashi and coal uh, trout in the Uttarakhand, state of Uttarakhand. So these are some of the pictures from there, how they are doing this. And uh, uh, so this is uh, this particular slide shows that how much is the person contribution to the cultured fin fish produced by different countries. And here we can see that Asia accounts for 89% of total global contribution. So the Asia, where China, India, Indonesia, they are the major players. So we have a very huge potential for uh, this uh, fish, fishes and aquaculture in our country. Then this is a potential of aquaculture in India. We know that just like the Green Revolution recently, the uh, Prime Minister of India is also talking about the Neil Kranti or the blue aquaculture revolution or blue revolution in our country. So the, the recent uh, like uh, plan also the prime minister, this finance minister uh, has also talked about like how much uh, importance we are going to give to the aquaculture apart from the regenerative agriculture, which is another important sector. So the potential of agri uh, aquaculture is going to in increase in times to come. And uh, it has been estimated that the first requirement by 2025 is going to be around 16 million tons. And aquaculture has to provide 10 million tons of this uh, fish requirement, which will be there in times to come. And this is this particular uh, map shows what are the potential of aquaculture in our country. We have cold water aquaculture, which is there in the Himalayan states as well as in the Northeast. Then we have freshwater aquaculture, we have mariculture, uh, we have coastal aquaculture. So the potential is very huge and uh, the, uh, like we have to see how much we can tap these resources in times to come. But we also have to see that what are different uh, practices which are already going on and how the government of India has been working for last so many years to, uh, to build up on this uh, fisheries and aquaculture sector in the our country and we know that we have integrated fish farming system which is there in different parts of the and they are all region specific so depending on the flexibility for region specific adapt, uh, adaptability for the component integration so that is now again we have this kind of integration where integrated fish farming is playing very important role we also have this wetland management with aquaculture and integrated farming because wetland we know are getting degraded as the population is increasing and we are having the land use, land cover, habitat degradation, and most of our land use is being changed and converted for your, uh, for building up the infrastructure. So all this wetland, wetland, which were the part of our tradition and cultures are now slowly and slowly they are getting reduced. And we know how important the wetlands are for our uh, systems as they provide a lot of ecosystem services in terms of uh, like your food and other ecological services also. So this is another area, fish culture in pens, which is also there being uh, developed in our country. Then we have fish duck farming system, which is another integration, which is also very famous. In different parts of the India, then we also have fish integration with makhana. This is very recent, like this makhana. Uh, which is a very popular crop and it fetches a lot of um, mar money in the market. So this fish integration with Makhana has been done in the inland fisheries, especially in the states of uh, uh, like uh, UP and Bihar and P, where this kind of integration is playing very important role in the upliftment of the rural communities. So this is a very important sector. Then we have ornamental fish farming. So we have a lot of... Uh, uh, like uh, potential for the ornamental fish farming and we know that high potential for large scale export. So the students who are uh, studying the fisheries, they have a huge uh, demand. They know that there's a huge demand for this ornamental fish farming. And uh, if they can, uh, they can make their career entrepreneurship opportunities exist in this uh, sector. A lot of, uh, and we know that a lot of unicorns, Unicorns are also coming up and then I came to know that there are two unicorns which are totally supported by the aquaculture sector. So the uh, students also have a very huge potential uh, that they can trap the sector and be part of the this uh, economic upliftment of uh, themselves as well as also provide 
employment to the other people, the rural people, and the entire supply chain. The entire supply chain has to be managed, and that supply chain will create a lot of jobs, a lot of income generating activities and opportunities for different sector of people. So this uh, has to be tapped by the students, the youngsters who are coming uh, uh, out of the colleges and universities that how they have to uh, build this entrepreneurship uh, and they have to inculcate the entrepreneurship in their uh, the fishery and aquaculture provides a very good scope for the uh, entrepreneurship for them. So this goldfish, we know that it is a very valuable uh, fish and it has an annual trade of about... Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Okay. So we have this uh, goldfish and we know that goldfish is fetch gold also. So we can compare it with the gold because it is fetching a lot of mark money in the international market and this, uh, it has a potential of generating about 900 million US dollar on the annual global trade. So this is uh, how uh, important it is for the uh, this entrepreneurship. <laughs> and then we have the aqua tourism. Aqua tourism is also growing uh, at a very large scale not only in our country, but in different parts of the world. So people now, because they don't, they haven't seen many of this uh, pristine ecosystem. So they have seen how the, uh, I mean, the youngsters, the younger generation, the young population, they just see how the fish has come to their table, but they don't know where it is growing, where it is really found, how it is, what is its natural setting. So the aqua tourism has a lot of potential. And even in our country, we see that this is growing, especially in the Northeastern state. Uh, we have this ecotourism in Northeast India where a lot of people, they go and they are contributing to this ecotourism uh, through the aquaculture sector. So this is also another important area of which can be trapped in times to come. And we know that then there are some other value additions also, like we have cold chain capacity for small farmers, then we have fish pickers, food grade, et etc., which is also being made out of this uh, fishes and other uh, Things then we have women enterprises which are very uh, well established in Mumbai and Kolkata because there's a lot of supply demand in this particular city. So the women enterprises are doing very uh, good job in some of these uh, areas. Then we have this muscle and oyster processing, which is uh, very, which has come up in a very good way in the Kerala. So in Kerala, also we see that value addition of this factory uh, of aquaculture has really done in a very good way. So now, uh, since the aquaculture sector is growing, the fishery sector is growing in a big way, then we have the old fish market markets are also uh, uh, seeing transformation. So we can see the two pictures. The up upper picture shows the old fish market in uh, Amlapuram, Andhra Pradesh, and how, how nicely it has been, it has, uh, uh, been revamped. The new look, you can see how... Uh, it has totally changed. So, so it has become very sophisticated, the new fish market in Amlapur of AP, you can see here. So this is the potential of fisheries and aquaculture in countries. So it is going to play a very great role in times to come for economic development, especially uh, for the rural people also. And then we have this kind of new fish outlets in uh, Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh is the major uh, aquaculture producing state in our country. So they are really doing wonderful jobs. So they have come up with this new fish outlets in the Andhra Pradesh. So we have so in other states also we can replicate such kind of things which in Andhra Pradesh they are doing a great thing. So this uh, what is the takeaway message? No message from whatever has been told just now is that uh, we need only a minimum of rupees twenty thousand profit per acre per year. So this is how much uh, what is the economics of this? Then this is also helping in some other ecosystem uh, environment like bioremediation of wastewater, which can also provide you some earnings. High potential of new science for application because you have all the value chain and, and if we can uh, we can uh, just address the different value chain what are the challenges what are the bottlenecks in different value chain so you have a lot of potential of uh, science application also to solve those uh, value chain problems then entrepreneurship reward like no other farm system so as i told you that there are some unicorns which have are totally based on the aquaculture and these uh, unicorns are going to grow so, so uh, we will be having more and more unicorns in the times to come because the aquaculture sector is going to grow in a much larger way and we know that it is uh, growing at the rate of 6.8 percent 
per year, which is just uh, in, in comparison to the agri sector, which is only about two to three percent. So that uh, has a lot of potential for uh, the future generation that they can uh, make their future, they can make their uh, career in the sector. So now, uh, after uh, just uh, having this uh, background, now I will come to my talk that is the restorative aquaculture, its future and potential. So why I'm talking about the restorative aquaculture? So we know that this particular decade, which we know as the decade of ecosystem restoration. So the United Nations has uh, decided that this particular decade, which will be spanned from 2021 to 2030, has to, we have to do a lot. We have to restore our damaged, degraded, and destroyed ecosystem. So last decade, the last decade was the decade for biological diversity and the current decade is the decade for ecosystem restoration. So this 10 years time, so this 10 years time from 2021 to 2030 is going to be very crucial that how can we restore our degraded ecosystems and that also talks about our wetlands, our water bodies, which can be a potential, uh, uh, I mean, they can be a good candidate for the aquaculture sector in times to come. So this uh, this ecosystem restoration, we know that it has emerged from the bone challenge. The bone challenge was the initiative of the uh, government of Germany. And in 2011, they come up with this idea that we have to bring about 150 million hectares of degraded and deforested landscape into restoration. by 2020 and 350 million hectares by 2030. So the Germany has been uh, on the, I mean, they were the initiator for this entire ecosystem restoration decade. And India has also, uh, uh, is a part of this entire campaign. And we have also said that we are also going to, uh, uh, I mean, 21 million hectare to 26 million hectare. This is the new target. Uh, the India has also set its target of 26 million hectare, which has to be restored by 2030. So that is uh, how important that if you talk about this decade, in this decade, we also have to meet some of the sustainable development goals. The 17 sustainable development goals, which were initiated in 2015 and already we are in 2022 and the time is very short and by 2030, uh, we have to see that how much uh, we can achieve on in terms of the 17 uh, sustainable development goal. So this, uh, this decade, which is spanning from 2020 2030 is very, very critical for the humanity because uh, we have this 10 years where we have to see that how can we restore our damaged, degraded and destroyed ecosystem. The target is already set. We have to have 350 million hectares on the global scale, 26 million hectares at the in national scale. Then we have this uh, uh, 17 development goals, sustainable development goals. And we know that uh, this aquaculture and fishery sector can help in a great way, one of this goal is totally, I mean, dedicated to this, uh, that is life uh, below water. So life below water, if you talk about this 14 SDG, it is totally dedicated to this fisheries and agriculture sector. Then we have this no poverty, zero hunger, good health. So all this, they have, I mean, we can see that this, uh, this 14th goal can be uh, at the center and then all the other goals can complement. So this fisheries and aquaculture sector will play a very important role in achieving all these 17 sustainable development goals. Then very recently, we also had this uh, Glasgow summit. We know that uh, in the COP26 in Glasgow, and uh, they have been talking that uh, as if you have to keep our global emissions, we have to cut down, we have to go to the zero emission, net zero emission. By 2050, if you want to keep our temperature within the limit of 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius from the, uh, this uh, pre-industrial uh, time. So we have already, the average temperature rise is 1.1 degree, already we have now reached to that 1.1 degrees Celsius. So the target is that, uh, the challenge is that we have to keep it within the limit of 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius. But uh, this, if we don't restore, so this in this challenge, when we have to, to uh, have, we have to cut down on our emission, we have to cut down on our carbon footprint. So how this restorative aquaculture is going to play a very critical role. So we know that we have to also tackle this demand of food production because the population is going to rise. And uh, by 2050, we will be having about 9 billion population. So 9 million population, so you also have to keep in uh, uh, mind that you have to feed the 9 million population. And then we also have a challenge of 
uh, cutting down our, our carbon emissions. So this aquaculture uh, plays very critical role here because from the other agriculture, we, we know that about 70 to 80 percent is because it is food production, which is accounting for nearly one quarter of global greenhouse gas emissions. And it is also responsible for 70 to 80 percent of freshwater usage and habitat degradation, respectively. So this is a study which has been done in 2018. And they say that uh, this uh, food production and we have to have this food production for the growing population. We know that uh, population will reach to, uh, about 9 mil billion by 2050. But if we are continuing on this. <laughs> uh, unsustainable agriculture. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Is it is it fine with my presentation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can continue, ma'am. Okay. Oh. So this was a study which came out in 2018, and then what there was there's another study by Nair et al. in 2021, and they say that aquaculture, the growing of animals and plants in the water, has also often developed at the expense. Okay. This is of the environment. So they say that even though if we are talking about the aquaculture, that it has a very huge potential, but again, it is not sustainable. It is being done on the expense of environment where we have habitat degradation, water pollution, impact of wild fish stocks and diseases, which are associated with the early year of commercialized aquaculture development. And it is continuing to challenge the environmental, the sustainable development of the industry today. So the study has said that although aquaculture is having a great potential, but the kind of aquaculture we are following, Uh, we are still practicing is uh, not sustainable. It is not uh, in line with the environmental protection or we have to also think about the environmental protection because now we have to see that uh, the net zero carbon emission by 2050 have to be achieved. So this restorative aquaculture has uh, come up as a great, uh, uh, I mean, how we can help in restorative aquaculture. So this restorative aquaculture occurs when commercial or subsistence aquaculture provides direct ecological benefit to the environment with the potential to generate net positive environmental outcomes. So now we have to think about how we have to make our aquaculture sector environmental friendly and how it can be developed. It can be developed in such a way that we get both economic returns as well as the environmental sustainability or the ecosystem services which we are getting from the uh, this uh, uh, aquaculture are also maintained. So we know that if, if we want to uh, go for this restorative uh, aquaculture, then we have to reduce the impact first. So the first step will be to reduce the impact of the harmful uh, activities uh, which are going on. And then we have to move towards the ecological sustainable development. And then we have, in that way, we will be able to achieve the restorative aquaculture which will be, uh, uh, I mean, also will provide us income, will provide opportunities of income generation for different sectors, especially the rural communities, because most of the, uh, the threat of the climate change is going to be on the rural communities. The people who are well off, the people who are living in the cities, they are not going to suffer from this climate change. We know that the climate change impact are already being seen as uh, the, uh, frequency of the floods, the cyclones has been increasing and every time you see that when there's a cyclone, the people who are living in the coastal area and who are dependent on the fisheries and if they are doing some kind of aquaculture, they are really badly hit by this kind of uh, climate uh, impacts uh, which are in the form of cyclones and floods. So uh, the restorative aquaculture will be helpful, for, especially for the people, the rural people, the poor people who are living in the coastal areas or also in the in land areas and doing their uh, fishing or fish farming. So these are the, uh, I mean, the global principles of restorative aquaculture, which have been set up in 2021 by the Nature Conservation Conservancy. And they have come up that uh, uh, just to have this uh, restorative aquaculture, uh, the countries have to follow certain kind of principles. So they have uh, come out with some six principles for uh, restorative aquaculture. And they say the principle one, it aims at that the farms are cited where environmental benefits can be generated. 
So where we have to go for aquaculture farming, the aquaculture farming will be done on certain sites, such sites where we can also have the environmental benefits uh, simultaneously along with the aquaculture production. So that is the first principle of this uh, global principles of administrative aquaculture, which have been outlined by the Nature Conservancy. Then we they also talk about the the principle two, which says that the culture species that can be that can provide the intended environmental benefits. So the cultural the species, the species which are, uh, I mean, indigenous species, the focus will be on indigenous species also, how we can uh, enhance the number of production of indigenous species, which are also part of the culture and tradition of the local communities, the traditional communities who are living in that particular region. So that should be, in, I mean, uh, targeted. And the principle three says that prioritizing the farming equipment that enables the delivery of environmental benefits. So we have to go for such kind of farming equipment, which is also helping in the simultaneous uh, environmental benefits. So that kind of uh, uh, prioritization of the farming equipment, the principle three speaks about. Then we have principle four, which says that adopt farming management practices that can enhance local ecological environmental benefits. So the traditional knowledge systems becomes very important here. The traditional farming communities, their knowledge, how they have been doing this. Because aquaculture is nothing new. This has been uh, done from the millennia. We know that in the Asia, South Asian country like China, India, Indonesia, this aquaculture was done from time immemorial. So the people that are very well aware of what we are not paying. I mean, we are not uh, in, uh, integrating their traditional knowledge in this modern science. So the integration of traditional knowledge system with the modern techniques is uh, all about this principle uh, four is talking about that we have to give equal importance to the traditional knowledge system of the traditional societies which are living in different parts of our country. Then the fifth principle, it says that strive to farm at an intensity and scale of culture that can enhance ecosystem outputs. So that we have to really see what is the farm and intensity but uh, the intensity and the scale of this culture. So that also we have to see that ecosystem outcomes, the ecosystem services should also be taken into account when we are trying to see like what will be the intensity of farming, what will be the scale of culture. So in that also we have to uh, take into consideration the environmental benefits, the ecosystem benefits, which will come out from that particular farming practice. Then the first, principle six speaks about recognize the social and economic value of the environmental benefits provided. So generally, when we talk about in ecology, we know that uh, when we talk about biodiversity, we know that biodiversity is the basis of our sustenance. Biodiversity is providing, it is critical for our living, it is critical for our survival. And if we don't do this restorative aquaculture, if we don't uh, I mean, implement in those regions which really needs it, then this uh, we are going to have this, lot of our fish species are going to be, uh, they will be in danger. And it has already been pointed out by the IUCN that if we don't do anything now, this uh, the restoration uh, decade of United, uh, UN decade of ecological restoration gives us uh, an opportunity that we have to really work hard. And if you want to prevent the extinction of 1 million species, so 1 million species by 2021, the IUCN has come out with this data that if we continue with this kind of practices, if we don't do anything with our carbon emissions, and then the biodiversity loss is also inevitable and we may leave, uh, lose about 1 million species by 2021. And in this 1 million, we may have a lot of our fish species, the uh, other aquaculture uh, species. So that also we have to see that social and economic value of the environmental benefits also have to be taken into consideration. So these are the, the six important global principles of restorative aquaculture which the Nature Conservancy has outlined. And uh, this has been very recent development in 2021. Really they have come up with this kind of principles for the restorative aquaculture. Now we know that the environmental benefits of restorative aquaculture, what is that? Why we are talking about the environmental benefits? So when we are talking about the ecosystem services, that is the environmental benefits, which this aquaculture can also provide us simultaneously. For example, here we can say that uh, we can see that a single hectare of restorative farm of aquaculture can remove more than half a ton of nitrogen. And this half a ton of nitrogen may cost around uh, 50 K US dollar to remove through wastewater treatment. So this is, um, uh, I mean, this is one ecological uh, service which this uh, 
restorative eco, uh, ecosystem can uh, provide us. Then we also it can filter up to 20 million, 25 million gallon of water per day. And that is equivalent to about 40 Olympic size swimming pools. So this is another important potential of this single hectare of restorative farm, which can provide us simultaneously along with providing us this shellfish and sea waves. Then, then it also can increase the abundance of wild fish by up to five tons per year. So if you have uh, this restorative aquaculture, then it can also help in increasing the wild fish population. So the abundance of wild fish by up to five tons per year. So that is very important, uh, I mean, uh, contribution which it can play. Then capture carbon dioxide in coastal waterways and social acidification. So it is playing a very important role in net CO2 emission because it is uh, a, a very, uh, I mean, kind of uh, activity which is not generating any kind of CO2, but in fact, it is also helping in the CO2 sequestration in the coastal waterways. And that is helping in the as, uh, preventing the acid uh, ocean acidification. And we know that ocean acidification is a very alarming problem for our uh, equity biodiversity. So we have to tackle the ocean acidification. There also this uh, restorative aquaculture can be uh, playing a very important and critical role. So this was another important study which has come out in 2022, very recent. And this is a climate friendly seafood, the potential for emission reduction and carbon capture in the marine uh, aquaculture. So this has been published by the Uni uh, University of Adelaide in Australia and this describes how marine aquaculture could significantly reduce its climate impact with exciting potential to move the industry to a net zero or even net positive impact on these households. So this uh, very recent study, very important study and I think we should all just uh, go through this, how it can be uh, uh, they have just shown the potential how it can uh, help us in moving towards the net zero even that positive impact on the house gas emissions. So this was uh, now uh, restorative agriculture has the potential to go a step beyond impact reduction and actually uh, improve our marine environment. So they say that um, most of the country we know that there is a significant potential of for a restorative aquaculture industry to be expanded and creating valuable opportunities to improve ocean health while generating economic returns. So every country has this potential for restorative aquaculture. It's not that only in India we are talking about it. The global scale also, they adopt, and the, for the Western countries, Australia, the European countries, they already all, always, always started implementing this restorative aquaculture because they are moving towards a nature-based solution. So nature-based solutions, they are now being implemented in the developing world where uh, the uh, green infrastructure, the nature these solutions are going to be the main key player in the uh, uh, this climate change fight and the fight for, uh, I mean, if you want to keep our uh, ecosystem healthy or the planet healthy. The nearly 50 million square kilometer oceans have been found to be environmentally suitable to farm with restorative aquaculture techniques, and that's roughly five times the size of China. So this study also says that we have a lot of potential for this restorative aquaculture to be implemented in different parts of the world and uh, about 50 million square kilometers of the ocean can be used for this purpose. Then we could, we, we could see even more benefits to ocean health if existing aquaculture operations are performed to implement restorative practices. So this study has also given us some takeaway home messages that how the aquaculture, the restorative aquaculture can help not only in providing uh, us with the income gener uh, generation activities, but can also help in providing a lot of ecosystem services and also fight against the climate change. So in fact, the nutrient removal benefits of this bivalve and seaweed farming was recently estimated to provide us about 84 to 50, 505 US dollar per ton of nitrogen reduction that I have already spoken. And so that is a lot of potential is there, potentially worth an additional 1,000 to 3,000 US dollar per hectare per year to commercial or recreational fisheries, to sustainable by wall and seaweed farming operation scales to three times their current size by 2050. So these are some of the findings of this particular paper, which, which is showing that how the aquaculture potential can help in, in uh, I mean, uh, restoration of our degraded uh, coastal areas and degraded water bodies. 
and also can help us in uh, climate change fight. So the integration of the traditional, then this, uh, uh, this, uh, the principles of this uh, aquaculture, restorative aquaculture, aquaculture also talks about the integration of traditional indigenous knowledge of aquaculture into restorative practices. And that will have a social and cultural benefits, including greater access to ways of being health and healthy and well-being and equally and better outcome for the environment. So the integration of this traditional indigenous knowledge is very critical if you want to implement restorative agriculture. And here I would like to give you an example of this uh, Jiro Valley, this paddy fish, paddy cum fish cultivation, which is practiced in the Apatani tribe in Jiro Valley. And this Jiro Valley is in the lower Suban city district of Arunachal Pradesh. So I had a chance to work in the Arunachal Pradesh because I was there from 2000. Just after doing my PhD from Northeastern Hill University, Shillong, which I completed in 1996, then I moved to Itanagar. And in Itanagar, there's an institute called Northeastern Regional Institute for Science and Technology. And so I was teaching there in the Department of Forestry from 1998 to 2006. I was there. So we had this opportunity of uh, doing some studies in the Jiro Valley. And we were looking after how shifting cultivation which has been practiced in entire uh, Northeast Harvata, its economical consequences, how it is degrading the environment. So there we saw that this paddy cum fish cultivation, which is being pra practiced mainly by the Apatani tribe, uh, is a very progressive agriculture community of Arunachal Pradesh. So this is a very, uh, I mean, important kind of integrated resource management system. So they have a very highly efficient resource management system where they are doing this uh, paddy cultivation along with the fish. So this is a typical house. So they all have the houses made out from the bamboo and this bamboo also grows in the vicinity. Uh, this is a special type of bamboo, which we call as apatani bamboo and it grows, it is a single term bamboo which grows near their household. So they grow it there. And this uh, this bamboo, which is a philostachys, just commonly known as uh, apatani bamboo and philostachys is the scientific name. So this is grown only uh, for construction of these houses, for fencing and all other kind of implements. The agriculture implements, the household implements, they are dependent on this bamboo species. Then they have a very huge forest on the, just uh, uh, just behind this bamboo, they have a very good forest cover, then, then they have agriculture. So this is a very typical house and forested area, which is around the paddy fields at Hong village in Jiro Valley of Arunachal Pradesh. And it is, very efficient um, integration of different resources, the natural resource management, how fisheries, how forestry, how aquaculture, and how agriculture is being integrated with the human in center. So very efficient and very uh, beneficial also for the area. And here, this is a young, uh, this is a woman of Apatani tribe, and they have a very distinct their identity, they have this nose plex, so uh, they are very different from other uh, from other natural tribes. So they have this kind of nose uh, plex, which they call as yapping harlo, and the traditional tattoo marks on their nose, forehead, and chin. So they are very unique, and this practice which they are following in this zero valley of this uh, rice uh, wet rice stump, uh, fish paddy cultivation is also very unique system of natural resource management. So what we are doing here is that 48.38% of the land they are using uh, for the paddy cum fish cultivation and about 32.64% of, of the, of the uh, land is being for train uh, this clan forest because the forest here belong to the communities. So they are also keeping the forest intact and then 16.441% of the bamboo forest they are growing uh, in the vicinity of the uh, valley, all this bamboo forest from where they can meet the requirement of uh, Bamboo, which the houses for houses for agricultural implements for the other kind of implements and all those things. And then they also have kitchen garden. Kitchen garden also they are having every household has got a kitchen garden of about 2.75%. So the Apatani community has evolved the sedentary farming in the form of a wet rice cultivation in the, uh, the this valley of uh, lower Sudan City, Jiro Valley, using the indigenous techniques. So just wanted to know how does the traditional knowledge system can also be very important they can play a very important role in the restorative aquaculture. So we have to, they are the most important stakeholders when we are talking about the restorative aquaculture. So this is how they do practice this uh, 
rice cultivation, rice fish cultivation in the valley, and this is a very unique practice which they are having and which has evolved from uh, uh, I mean many many years. So it has been said that for last 500 years, these Apatanis are doing this kind of cultivation. They came to this valley about 500 years back. So they have a very sustainable, very environmental friendly way of uh, doing this particular aquaculture. So how they are collecting the fishes from the trenches, these are the rice fields and these marks which they are making. This, uh, this burns which they make around the rice field that is very strong and this, will, this really help in keeping the fishes intact in this paddy fields. And this, uh, the, the watershed, because they have a very good forest cover on the background, so the, all the water from the watershed, it comes and move into their water bodies, uh, sorry, into this uh, rice fields which they have. And this is uh, they have evolved through the traditional, uh, traditional knowledge system. So these are terrace fields. Uh, you can see the terrace, they have this kind of terracing because it is a very uh, good uh, valley. And, and that is why they call it as a zero valley. It's a very round shaped valley. So these terrace fields are landscapes on slight incline. So very a, a slight slope, gentle slope they have, and they have created this kind of landscape for terracing so that the water runs into each field at a high end and out at low end. So this is how this traditional knowledge which they have used in uh, uh, making this kind of terrace system. And then they use these bamboo net traps which are placed on the burns between two plots to restrict movement of fish. So this is the indigenous knowledge which they have uh, used in this that they are using these bamboo net traps which are being placed between the two burns and then this restrict the movement of the fishes from one uh, area to the another area. So this is a common carp which uh, is being harvested in these paddy fields. This woman you can see that she's collecting this common carp. And you have lush green paddy fields which are also green. So the economics, we also did the economics of this paddy cultivation and found that the output input ratio uh, of this paddy cultivation which they were, this, they were following this Apartheni tribe was much, much higher uh, this in compared to even the Punjab and uh, Haryana state if we talk about the ecosystem services which they were providing. And even the production of this agriculture, uh, this uh, paddy was much, much higher in this kind of uh, system. So here you can see how this uh, young girl, she's also collecting only the matured fish they are taking out in the water. And then they do this collection from early July and the rest are kept going till August. So they don't, uh, they do it in a very sustainable way. So they don't collect everything at a time. So only the matured uh, fishes they collect during the July and then they keep the young population till August and that is how uh, this uh, sustainable supply is being maintained. Now this is fish moving inside paddy field. You can see how the paddy fields looks like. So this is the fishes which are moving within the paddy fields and they call them in local language they are known as Aji Niglai. So Aji Niglai, this is the local name of this type of fish which they are going in the paddy fields. So this system of integrated farming, which is by using combination of paddy and fish together, has claimed to be one of the most productive and efficient agriculture in the state of the Uttarakhand, in, in fact, in the entire Northeast. And we have also seen its economics and we compared the economics with the, uh, the, the modern agriculture. Agriculture fields, which are there in the Punjab and Haryana, and found that the input output ratio, if you the economics, if you uh, calculate, then these are much, much uh, efficient system, even in comparison to this modern system which are being uh, adopted in the other states. So, because of this uh, very unique nature, in April 2014, the Apatani culture landscape was listed under the tentative list of UNESCO World Heritage for their unique agriculture technique, which is being practiced within the community. So, this UNESCO has prescribed some 10 criteria. To be, uh, to be considered as the UNESCO World Heritage Site and every site has to meet about at least two of these norms. So Apadani Cultural Landscape has made it to the tentative uh, UNESCO World Heritage uh, List for Unique Settlement System and uh, man, uh, this man and nature relationship. So they are still working, the work is still going on. So one criteria they have already completed. So they are also working, the paperwork is going on for Another criteria, so if they do it, so they may be enlisted as one of the UNESCO's World Heritage Site in future. So, so uh, what I wanted to just this picture, which is a very important picture because uh, you all must be aware of uh, Padma, the late Padma Vibhushan Sundarlal Bhavanaji, and uh, he hailed from the Uttarakhand, and uh, this is the man behind the Chippewa movement. So, uh, due to COVID, we lost him in 2021. Last year, he died because of COVID. 
but uh, he was uh, i mean he was advocating that ecology is a permanent economy so right from his younger young age when he was uh, he also participated in the freedom fight moment and then he used to advocate that ecology is a permanent economy and he was a man behind who was protesting against this large a uh, construction of large da uh, dams in the fragile ecosystem of himalayan region and then he was also advocating that we have to grow we have to grow uh, this uh, agroforestry we have to uh, grow the uh, tree farming we have to go for the tree farming in the himalayan hills not for the agriculture farming because the land holding is very very fragmented and with that we have been seeing lot of migration which is taking place from the hill states and lot of ghost villages are existing in the uttarakhand now so uh, we have the time has come that what he was saying uh, about 50 to 60 years back even the unesco or the united states uh, un uh, they all are talking about that we have to move towards the sustainable management practices and in the decade of ecological restoration this uh, 2020 to 2030 2021 to 2030 gives us an opportunity that at least we should uh, move in that direction now because if you don't do anything if you just keep on degrading your environment degrading your ecosystem then the one million species which we are going to lose by 2021 will be will be a reality so uh, in the, those uh, and our own survival will also be stake because we are seeing the kind of heat waves the kind of floods the kind of cyclones and every time the people who are the vulnerable society who are living in the rural areas in the mountain areas in the coastal areas they are going to be hit most by this climate change uh, impact so the time has come that we all should join hand and we have to see that how can we restore our ecosystem and the restorative aquaculture can play a very great role in this endeavor that uh, we can uh, have sustainable future we can have uh, we can reduce our carbon footprint we have net, net zero emission we keep our temperature global temperature within the limit of 1.5 degrees celsius and also we prevent the loss of our biodiversity which is very very valuable to all of us so with this uh, slide i would like to stop my presentation and if you have uh, any question i am free to answer the queries of the youngsters especially thank you so much yes uh, thank you so much ma'am for your wonderful uh, deliberation about the aquaculture for rural development uh, you in your talk you uh, talk on the restoration of the aquaculture which is a uh, commercially based also you talk on the global principle of restoration in the aquaculture their policy making and the benefits towards the fresh water and the marine water aquaculture development also also you discuss on uh, global compare of the aquaculture and also the opportunity of aquaculture for rural development uh, in terms of the food in terms of the money and in in terms of the integrated aquaculture development uh, also in the india so thank you very much for, very much ma'am for your such a wonderful lecture uh, i i request audience if any any questions related to this you can ask to ma'am chat boxes there is no question can't say any question uh, you can you can uh, put your question on chat box also i think there are no questions i don't see any questions on the chat box so i hope i could do some justice because uh, fishery is not my field but yes i have been working on this uh, natural resource management and uh, environment so i could link uh, I thought let me link the ecological restoration decade with this uh, aquaculture. How restorative aquaculture is going to be very critical in the decade of ecological restoration, and everybody has to play a part in that. Thank you so much. Good morning, madam, for your excellent presentation. Uh, yes, Chakul sir. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank Thank you yeah, so much. Thank you 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 so so much. much. have presented here yes uh, something at least uh, or or any hilly areas also they are doing yes, yes. Of so, yeah. I think certainly it uh, boosts the economy. Yes. 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 Y
rather rural economy. And one thing you have suggested, yapping hurlo. The it's like a nose mask. Now we are wearing mask. So they have already tradition. <laughs> Huh? Yes. <laughs> <It's> unique. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so that's why the people, the, the traditional society, they are really, I mean, they have evolved in such a way that what we are doing now, they were knowing long time back. So we have to yes. really, I mean, respect the, uh, respect the knowledge system. And now the government of India is also seeing, uh, in recently they had this Department of Science and Technology, they had a national network program on documentation of traditional knowledge system. And in that, in Doon University, we were also part of this network program where we tried to document the traditional knowledge system of this Bhutia tribes, which are there in the far-flung areas of Uttarakhand state. So this traditional knowledge system and integration with the modern uh, science, that is uh, very important if you want to solve any kind of environment. problem, whether it is a climate change, whether it is a pollution, whether it is a biodiversity loss. So it has, the time has come that we have to give all the respect to this uh, traditional uh, societies because they have evolved the nature. So we can't ignore them. If we really want to keep ourselves, safe, we have to really do like Chikpa moment. Now Chikpa moment was the backbone of this entire thing. But we are talking about now, so, so you have to restore your entire degraded forest ecosystem. So this was all came out from the people who are living in those areas and who are experiencing the problem of uh, environmental degradation. So that's very important component in fact. Thank you so much. Thanks, madam. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. So if uh, I think I have a meeting, so can I leave the, uh, this, uh, because there was some phone call also coming from the vice chancellor. So if uh, I can leave the meeting. So, uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for yes, delivering a nice and wonderful lecture, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma now we are forwarding to, for the technical sessions. Uh, Uh, now we have a uh, plenary session first and plenary session second. So uh, we move forward up, forward to the plenary session first. And uh, I request the, the plenary session first. The chair uh, request the professor, uh, Dr. Vasan Sakputi sir, principal late Ramesh Varkutkar Arts, Commerce and Science College. To chair the session, and yes, yes. and uh, with the permission of the chair, I I like to uh, give the brief about about the plenary session first. I introduce uh, today's speaker, Professor Dilip Dilip Jha, sir. Professor Dilip Jhasar received his PhD in Aquaculture and Aquatic Resources from the Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand, and, who, and over 40 years of experience in teaching, research, and extension. He is a professor of Aquaculture and Aquatic Resources Management in the Department of Aquaculture at the Agriculture and the Forest University, Rangpur, Chitwan, Nepal. Throughout his career, he has worked with uh, academic institutions, research, and non-governmental agencies working in Nepal. In 1982, he started his research on fishery resources of Karnali River under the Dolphin Crocodile Ecology Project, where he worked as a research scholar. His project has played a key role in launching new projects that support international collaboration. Zaha's research focuses on the status and conservation of fish diversity of major river system in Nepal. Earlier, he has participated in a research workshop on gender studies in agriculture held at Wajingnar Agriculture University, Netherlands in 1991. 
He has successfully completed several national and international projects through different organizations. He has published over a hundred articles in national and international uh, journal, as well as several books and laboratory manuals on aquaculture and fish health management. Also, he was actively uh, in, involved in the Aqua Fish Innovation Lab project, supported by USAID through Origin State University and University of Michigan. With the support of Aqua Fish Innovation Lab, he has able to create awareness of human nutrition through a school pond education program. Also, he successfully completed tenure as a director curriculum center at the Agriculture and Forestry University, Rampur Chitwan. He is mainly focusing on solving the challenges in the, in the production of fin fish, fish species as well as investigation and conservation of native fishes and creating awareness on nutrition. Also, he was involved in USAID PINI program in Nepal through Youth Alliance for Environment for short-term consultants to train the participant and prepare uh, training material, technical handbooks on integrated fish farming, technical handbook on fish preservation and processing. Currently, uh, Professor Dilip Jha is a chairman of Department of Aquaculture. I welcome on the on the hop of the three colleges in this the in this international conference on aquaculture for rural development. I welcome the Professor Dilip Jha uh, in this gathering and uh, and request to give his remark about the aquaculture for rural development. Thank you, sir. Over Thanks, to sir, for uh, uh, introduction and. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, honorable principals from different institutions, uh, Dr. Rajdhar J. Temkar, Dr. Basant D. Satpute, Dr. Biswas S. Khandere, Dr. Muhammad Fajil, and all the conveners and head of the Department of Geology, Dr. Patular uh, Chorpagar, uh, Dr. Santos Rankham, uh, Dr. Tanvir Pathan, uh, Dr. Saidi Abdullah, Dr. Kusum Prof or Professor Kusum Urnachalam, and again. Our Bhujan friends, Dr. Binay Chakravarti from Bangladesh Agriculture University. So it's really great for me. And above all, I am telling you, it's uh, uh, Professor Tanvir, who is a continuously encouraging to participate in such a prestigious event and uh, say something about the aquaculture for rural development in Nepal. Actually, you know, the Nepal, uh, especially is a land-linked country. You know, I am going to say about the just background about Nepal, then what's the status of aquaculture and what's our role the role of academician in the university, then what are the development domains and conclude conclusion. So just think is many uh, and most of you have already visited our, uh, it's a small one, but beautiful country. So area just see 147, one is a square kilometer. It's a completely landlocked country. There is no sea in Nepal. If you see the population, then just only is uh, 30 million. I think most of the states of India have the more population than Nepal. And if you talk about the elevation, then it's only lowest elevation in the eastern part of Nepal. So 60 meter to is the top of the world 
8848.9 is uh, recent 1.8 meter <coughs> so width if you talk about the width so it's a bihar part of india the from roxol to, uh, to the northern part of nepal is only the 193 km in the width while the length from east to west is only 885 km so the physiography if you see the physiography of nepal then it's only the himalaya is the mostly the most part of nepal is see the 27% then mid hills the 50% and tarai actually i have included here the inner tarai part also otherwise is actual flat land area in nepal it's only the 23 uh, 17% only the so very less the flat land area is uh, uh, only 17% otherwise is a mountainous one you know so even you people call mountainous country and uh, we have the three major river systems in the eastern uh, the eastern part of nepal the koshi one which is very devastating in the you know the bihar state of india then again in the central part the gandhi river system and in the western part of nepal uh, we called karnali river but in Nep in india it is called while entered in india it is called ghagra river and all these three major river systems drains the major river of india the ganges river system so just to see the uh, we have the natural uh, waters next to uh, you know the brazil but even until now uh, we are not uh, just uh, utilizing all the water resources of our country but there is a great potential uh, for utilization of the rivers and along with the rivers lakes reservoirs we have village ponds also and wetlands marginal swamps and irrigated paddy fields so if we divide the aquaculture under different agro ecological zones in nepal then we have upper the upper zone the cold water fisheries which is uh, the commercial one and middle cool water semi commercial and lower flood plain the commercial one so these three zones are completely separated if you say about the sacrophilic mesophilic and thermophilic type and similar types so just earlier earlier it was you know is uh, after 90 you know and 80 after 80 generally is uh, um, the term aquaculture earlier is uh, the fisheries only so capture fisheries enhance fisheries and culture fisheries is very simple how are we going to define one capture and enhance and culture fisheries which we call fish culture or aquaculture so capture fisheries if you just put the formula control if you have no control then capture no control anywhere you are going to from anywhere you are going to fish fishing without any you don't need any permissions it goes under the capture one enhance fisheries is you have here only partial control you have to release the only stocking materials means uh, hatchling fry fingerlings just only you don't need to care anything and feed the uh, fry fingerlings or the stocking material nothing you have to do <laughs> we have in most of the lakes uh, in nepal and some reservoirs just Uh, like enhanced fishery or even you can say culture based fishery and one is the aquaculture 
where you can farm anything or you can raise anything, aquatic or any aquatic organism, even the plants, you know, any plants and animal you can raise here, uh, but it's our controlled condition. So see, and it's uh, very recently, it's only, I think, uh, three months, about three months ago, the FAO completely separated the aquaculture and fisheries. Though it was earlier, it's, uh, you know, highly controlled what's uh, what the fisheries and what's the aquaculture or culture or fish culture like that. So it's clear cut now. So if we see the species number, we have the Nepal, uh, I have already told you, very small, beautiful landlocked country, though we have, but total we have the fish species reported in 2019, is December 2019 is 252 species. Among these indigenous, we have 236 and exotic 16, a species under culture, we have carps. Carps are most, mostly cultured in Nepal, you know. It's a seven species of carps. And uh, we have indigenous and exotic one. And we have perch also under cultivations. It's a tilapia, exotic one. Though we have an abyss, the climbing perch, but uh, we have not uh, started yet. And in Bangladesh is uh, climbing perch is uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just under the farming. And catfish, we have two catfishes. The actually Pangasius, Pangasianodon, hypothalamus, and other catfish, though it's restricted, but the people are cultivating African catfish, the walking catfish, Clarius garipinus, not the indigenous, is exotic one. So these all fishes comes belongs to order 15 orders different orders so see the orders composition order fem 15 and family 40 and general 120 and these are the different families dominating by the species generally you know cyprini form and siluri form order is the dominating one and these are the fish fish species uh, mostly you know is uh, most of the species you are going to find in the uh, Indian subcontinent, even in Bangladesh, even India and Nepal, we have these species. So see, these are the species. Uh, and uh, these species found in Nepalese yeah, uh, inland waters. So most of the uh, Fishes comes under Cyprini form order, family Cyprinidae, then Siluri forms, then Pangas and African catfish, the perch. Under the perch, the Sicily form orders, we have tilapia only. So see, the, we have Indian major carps, the Levioroita, then Mrigal, Srinas Mrigla, and uh, we call Bhakur or Katla, the Katla Katla. Yeah, then we have uh, Chinese carps also. The silver carp, hypophthalmic thismolytrix, big head carp uh, is uh, is new name name change earlier aristichthys now is the hypophthalmic thys nobilis. Then again grass carp, tinofaringodonidella, and we have common carp also. You know the Cyprinus carpio. We have two two varieties of common carp. Actually, Cyprinus carpio variety is. Uh, communists and other the uh, other the mirror carp we have cyprinus carpio variety specularis the nudus also but we don't have at present the leather carp then the striped catfish is uh, pangasianodon hypophthalmus and uh, then african catfish this one this one nile tilapia we have here and uh, we are farming also. It's only one and a half year ago, only government of Nepal permitted to farm this fish under the restricted condition, you know, this tilapia. 
because they have issues if these fishes going to just invade the natural systems then uh, problem face with the indigenous and uh, uh, i have seen in the lakes of pokhara valley the beautiful lake city in nepal and uh, um, this piece uh, also i have found from the gandak river system just the last year and we have rainbow trout also this cold water but it's exotic one rainbow trout and it's uh, cold water fishes we cultivating and exporting also to some extent then we have silver perch under the research center only barbonimus goniodotus and we have also taught our earlier just uh, presenter uh, professor kusum already indicated is taught so we have taught putitora and taught taught you have two species and is also the endangered fish in nepal so these are the species under the research centers and researches are going on in initial stage little bit fast growth otherwise is very slow growth you know so total fish production though recent data changes even the 97 is some is conflicting you know our system is in nepal is completely different you know we have 2000 22 but in nepal we have the years 2079 is going on official is the, the 2022 is the year going is it's not the official you know 2079 and uh, the month is baisakh we call we don't call january february nothing though is uh, uh, see is uh, april or oh, april or is uh, may now is uh, but we have here you know baisakh 24 you know official baisakh of there is no official is uh, april may like nothing so this is the production so from aquaculture only see the 17 1700 is uh, then fishery is uh, captured fishery is stable only 21000 metric ton you know is uh, stable but fish farming in pond it's going to incre- uh, increasing if we see the contribution in agriculture G- gdp is uh, around 4.2 while contribution in national gdp uh, while i have seen in india also it's not too much uh, around 2 uh, uh, we have uh, 1.2 only is you know so here also very less and per capita fish production is india more uh, um, over 8 kg but we have only uh, 3 3.2 around 3.2 you know but uh, is uh, some data is uh, 29 only is uh, 19 only that's why see the uh, culture and captures the position so culture increasing if you see the trend so culture is a potential is aquaculture is increasing while the capture one is now earlier it was you know <laughs> the data indicates earlier but it's now stable on the 21000 only the metric tons of the audience we have so just uh, if we see the potential though we don't have you know see in nepal but globally the alternative people are thinking about the alternative sheep food and uh, it's a global one see around 2000 um, is in between 2020 to yes. 25 then yes. again uh, it's a 20 2025 to 2030 Uh, alternative people are going to shift the uh, food and uh, economy going to be changed and aquaculture is also going to be boom in the recent coming years so if you say the nepal 
the you know is though it's mountainous country mountainous country so the flat land area we have the pond aquaculture and is expanding rapidly in the tarai belt of nepal the flat land then water logged areas are converted to ponds also see in the midland area so see in the midland area of nepal also in people are encouraging to uh, establish in the uh, the dugout ponds like that then see the is uh, hilly area is cold water one where the stp slope in, in the stp slope of the uh, area the on the ponds and the farm is a cold water species you know rainbow trout so trout farming in the hilly areas of nepal again just seeing so a species diversification is tilapia pangasius clarius farming going on and uh, is haparyering is uh, for the juvenile is for juvenile is good and uh, if you see the species then what is the pangas you know the 400 metric tons or even uh, seven is in some differences the 700 metric tons and vietnam is the leading one uh, for the pangasius production in the world so just to see in nepal just starting very less so our most culture you know culture species under the you know carps and see the species selection you, you know silver carp is the most fastest growing fish species due to its phytoplankton feeder and growth is good but it's uh, face low price you know if bigger more than uh, one or two kg then it's uh, going to face price otherwise is less then rohu see the rohu the lebio rohita is a great market and fetch high market price for culturally in the some of the um, in the ethnic groups in nepal when wedding ceremony they need this one rohu and is famous for you know lebio rohita is famous for it test not only for it test it poses more uh, glyco uh, glyco phosphate especially uh, so this one the uh, essential for memory power also then mrigal we call nanny hair then uh, see the common carp then grass carp then big head carp and other carps then uh, is uh, you know Uh, people feel some difficulties in uh, breeding katla baku but it's also the fastest growing fish this uh, katla katla so this one then next the feed and if you see the traditional feeding like that then traditional feed is a combination of you know is a rice bran and mustard oil cube so most of the farmers no use you know even 84% farmers use you know is a self made uh, pellet fish and only 16% they using the you know pellet so it's a traditional type of feeding system so then again expanding the marketing of any enterprise is very very essential if you are not going to market for any enterprise then it's really difficult so life is sales and marketing has increased even kathmandu the colder one but uh, they anyway they are managing to sell life fish so huge marketing and uh, people are growing fishes and to maintain dissolved oxygen they are trying to just place the water in ponds and some uh, persons are using aerators also 
So what are the challenges? Actually, the challenges in uh, challenges to aquaculture is actually the seed quality. You know, seed is the very important factor. The good quality of seed it's uh, determine the growth of fishes pro production. Then a species diversity. Even though we have a species, we have other indigenous species, but we are completely concentrated on carp. You know, the indigenous carp, three species and four species of exotic carps, then feed and food conversion ratio is very essential. Then waste disposal, then quality production, then balanced, supply and urban aquaculture. We are noticing in some areas of Nepal, the peoples are interested to start some aquaponics and other aquaculture, urban aquacultures and biosecurity and food safety. It is also very, very essential one. So just to see for seed survival, I am going to give message is survival is very less. So if anyone going to start the hapa rearing, then it is really, it promises you the good one the, that the, is a survival. It's really great, the hapa rearing. Please try. Otherwise, general people growing, it's less. And uh, I have conducted one trial to rear fishes with probiotic, different types of probiotics, in which stage it really works or it doesn't work. So even in, you know, it's aquaculture by Elsevier, it's a paper. So just think, uh, it's, uh, you know, hapa rearing is also good. And to some extent, our, uh, you know, the, in the hatchling estate, to some in the hatchling estate, probiotic, all probiotics work well, while some probiotics only work in the fry estate and the developmental estate. But after finger links, there is no need of any, no. So this is the finding of my research. So just see, if we talk about the university, because we all are academician and we are working in the university. Uh, earlier, you know, I worked in the Truman University, but place and other things same. And uh, one technical university, this is the only technical university established in Nepal, the Agriculture and Forestry University in 2010 and this is the only university in Nepal which uh, we cater four years BSc fisheries program. In India we, uh, uh, you have the uh, Bachelor in Fisheries BFSC it's a four years and uh, see our fisheries program building is actually new programs and we are going to just enrolled each year only 15 to 20 students. And we have also the Master of Science in Aquaculture and we have PhD program. But until now only two PhD graduated and others are on the path. Actually in the university, just uh, think for the university, you know, uh, we have four years uh, BSc physics program. I am already telling this is the points of the university. This one, then the role of the university. The so see until and unless the works of the university do not bring about any change in the life of home those works are intended for, they do not have any meaning, you know. If we are not going to make any societal change, then what is the meaning of university? Nothing. 
and our university is this is the only university which cater technical so this is a technical university we have forestry also we have veterinary science also and we have agriculture and the fisheries also so what is the role played by our university for the societal change see the the actually development domains knowledge attitudes skills and agency policy and applications so just think here see the, these are the developmental is the domains so how we are going to mix with society to the academician other institutions then again just think the the rural for farmers so just to think so many fits for the target stakeholders is a better understanding of what the development has to offer to them to the actually is the society one then income generation and hence improved livelihood just see and these events ultimately leading to to social improvement so it's our role academician's role and for that we have developed one program the awareness on nutrition through school pond education you know the government schools we have private education center also under the government schools you know so here we have a started program we support the schools actually just may i continue because my time already 11 to 12 but i started very late you know so may i continue or not is time already gone 12 yes yes sir yes. you can continue sir for if you provide uh, 15 to 20 minutes then i am going to finish yeah uh, within a 15 minutes you can sir you can okay yeah oh you see your time is very important and yes, yes. you already coming to meet me from uh, yeah 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 foreigners so time is very important i have given i uh, said so 12 just to see the situation so awareness on nutrition through so you can manage you you have to develop project you have gst ds dbt many more things so this is very simple way but we have to take the challenge you know because is uh, our system in school is only 10 10 plus 2 then only the university from bachelor so see is uh, school children 8 9 and 10 and uh, we supported uh, in different locations to the end given training to the school to school in each school to school teachers and the students and students they know how to farm the fish and how they grow and also we provide uh, some equipments uh, to measure the dissolved oxygen then turbidity then ph see the this is see the principal see the principal of one school and we have uh, given the equipment uh, then see the is the ponds of the school and uh, they told me that is uh, uh, see the see the language is most is uh, like in india the alphabet you if you see in nepal same same the most you know so see the school students in many schools we have see within see within 6 to 8 month they grow this fish and students see oh this is the way educating see our university is our university program how to go in the society like that this one see see the all the all all cards and principal happy with <laughs> this fish see the principals then again 
see the schools uh, in under this uh, different location even i so i am uh, just train uh, training giving lecture but i also give the lecture to the uh, students but it's a different language you know it's a nepali language so like that see the net and other things and our is uh, the program coordinator just going to train how to handle the equipment and see the principal this principal from other schools very happy to see this device sechi disc to measure plankton turbidity see huh? and he told me he is going to make going to make uh, by his own is a very simple way so just he is trying to that it works or not see the principal try <laughs> the plankton turbidity the see the changes you know so is very again another schools then we have given training to the all students you know all students uh, parents especially mother to know and also support how they are going to farm the fish and what are the importance of fish why do we eat fish you know in nepal peoples like uh, what you call the rice you know peoples like rice and rice is the energy source carbohydrate when rice is supplemented with rice is supplemented with fish do i have uh, attended most of the and when uh, scientists presented paper from the bangladesh they started the one thing they start their present uh, presentation with macher bhater bangali <laughs> even in america <laughs> the the bangladeshi the scientists while presenting they start so see in nepal uh, what is we just supplement the food and train to the see the children's parents especially mother see see here the social how uh, it is going to change the societal changes in the and by this see the one encouraging results see the lady from usid from oregon state university and uh, just this one from jim dina from you know is hilary igna uh, from uh, oregon state university is jim dina from university of michigan and is a usid supported project through our university to the schools so see one of the students studying in class 9 uh, they just dug out pumps see the changes changes right while going to give the training you know so is so we don't think that you are going to uh, launch the program in school no if you are going to make societal change then see the our next project see the area of this photograph this one the stp area this is the photograph of the bajang is very you know is near the china border china border and there is a river called seti river and see the peoples peoples using even dynamiting even electric fishing and others then they use other discriminating you know for conservation of fish we started no one knows in this area we are going to farm the fishes is little bit colder one you know so just see we have searched the lands see the stones you do search the lands is is really uh, we are going to dug the ponds in such area then we give the training to the see the farmers see how to test the soil good soil which hold the water see which hold the water see the this type of training then this is the see one farmer again 
but supported by you know you fund supported by our university you know then only other <laughs> you know uh, then they are interested to grow then integrated fish farming see the vegetables see the different types of ponds then again training to them this is another is a other type of program is not the school pond program is a different one to uh, in the interior it's a, most of the interior parts of nepal so even you can form the project but you have to visit if you have time you know then you have to manage uh, during the vacation otherwise it's very difficult to manage time to just give the training and support such activity so just to see people uh, is mostly use gill net you know this type of net so changing we have changed the people please protect conserve the fishes and support with this program integrated fish farming see this they are happy the fisher fisher community they are happy see by taking this one the then again how we are going to value added then we have given training to farmers the boneless you know is a spine a spine is very is really very difficult uh, so that's why how to going to make feeling feeling so this is the uh, farmers is the program coordinator one here the train this one is the farmer again the, 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 the see they make and very happy with fish fillet there is no spine there see even in the carp no spine is unique and very simple techniques to make fillet by your own very simple see so what the way forward what what we have to do so economic development is essential to combat malnutrition especially in children women and general awareness on nutrition so value of local crops for health we have to say if you see if you visit western part of nepal so western part of nepal is a mountainous area they have food deficit you know other other crop but they only know the rice is the only food you know bread they don't say the bread is the food see see the mindset system so that's why we have to again just uh, how we are going to popularize other you know other food commodities to for the healthy one so this one is very very important and so just to think of the concluding remarks so the, the number of indigenous fish species are of high economic academic and decorative value and research based strategies on fish fauna need to be encouraged though we have several endemic species but uh, we are not just uh, going to start what the um, aquaculture status of so, such a species the nepalese aquaculture is the fastest growing sub sector under agriculture and but you know even covid cases again is increasing in nepal you know in india also then covid 19 has huge impact on this sub sector and ultimately the economic condition of fish growers seed and feed supply interrupted so little attention given despite important role of natural grown food on so just to think no no i am going to finish very soon please just wait only for 2 minutes the concept of the economic development in recent years for the comprehensive and sustainable management natural water resources is gaining popularity in our country you know popularity so one of its fundamental principles is a holistic approach to all sectors of activity preserving the quality of ecosystem goods and services in the long term so fisheries and aquaculture see side by side capture one capture one the fisheries or even you culture based fisheries and aquaculture are a crucial sector recently both in terms of employment and contribution 
to national economies and food security, we have to promote the sector widely for sustainable development. If we are going to make any societal change, then really you are great academician if you think like that. I think so. So thanks everyone. And I am really grateful to really is uh, Tanvir, Dr. Tanvir Pathan for providing me an opportunity to say something what is going on uh, in the academia, especially in, a, in our university for societal and rural development. Thanks everyone for your endurance. Thanks. If any Thank query, uh, I welcome you for your questions. Yes. Two, three short questions because uh, I have to meet you, the foreign delegates. You know, I have given time 12. Okay. Thank you, Professor uh, Zha, sir, for your yeah, wonderful, yes, sir. wonderful lecture. Uh, I would like to, uh, if any questions, uh, please ask. Audience, if any questions related to this, please ask. If any question, they will put in the chat box. I told you just yeah, uh, yeah, continue yeah. with the program. And we, we have to continue and I am going to answer uh, later. Just yes, uh, yes, yes. thank you. Thank you. The I, need only, I need only five minutes break to just uh, his foreign delegates already here. So just uh, yes, yes, yes. You can take a break. Sir. Thank if, you. Thank any, you. Any questions? Any short question? Any 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 queries? No, no, no. No. Okay. Any query? No, no, it's, uh, I am telling you how we are going to change ourselves, you know. It's a challenging jo job for the university professors. It's really very challenging. <laughs> really very. Okay, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I, I welcome the today's session chairperson, uh, Dr. Vasan Satpati, sir, principal late Ramesh Varputkar Arts, Commerce and Science College Sonpet to give the session remark. Okay. Thank you, Atul. Am I audible? Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, being one of the chief organizing secretary of this uh, joint venture, I welcome all the resource persons for accepting our invitation and uh, helping us to make this event as a international one. Uh, we have two resource persons from abroad, and more than 10 participants from abroad, which contributes to make this conference as international one. Uh, again, I would like to aware the participants that uh, we are trying to concretize the very concept of cluster colleges, uh, where the members of the clusters use the resources of each other for and form a such type of alliance. Uh, uh, since last two events, we are doing the same one. Uh, the same is being expected in education, uh, policy 2020 also. Uh, Atul, I would like to uh, say you that uh, in recent past, uh, we undertook one uh, international uh, conference in collaboration with uh, Nilanga College, uh, where Honorable Vice Chancellor Dr. Uddo Bhosle, uh, sir, uh, praised such joint venture in academic activities. And therefore, uh, I again congratulate all the coordinators and my colleague principals, those who are involved in this activity. Uh, to organize such venture. Uh, the real inspiration, no doubt, uh, behind organizing organizing such events is, of course, the uh, patrons of these uh, institutes like uh, Honorable Parmesh Rauji Kadam Sahib, then uh, Appa Sahib Rajre Kaka, uh, Honorable uh, Jaydat Tanna Sirsagar Sir, and uh, uh, Mrs. Khan Sahib Begum, uh, who supported us from uh, time to time. Of course, coming back to the session uh, remarks, uh, okay, let me tell you frankly that I am not the expertise in this field to pass any comments on the session. But as a session chair, uh, I must say uh, that the talk and the presentation given by Mr. Dilip Kumar Jha, uh, certainly it has been very enlightening one. And in a very lucid and a simple way, uh, he tried to convince the participants. Of course, uh, uh, for some time we were not in India, but in, we were in Nepal, uh, where uh, he took all of us, uh, where the land linked country uh, Nepal is just concerned. 
he referred certain uh, names of the rivers the major river system that is of the uh, in nepal that is the ghagra uh, then we have uh, the participants are being introduced with the nepal aquaculture uh, we understand that uh, near about 225 species are there of the fishes uh, certain pond aquaculture again is uh, rapidly uh, growing there itself uh, dr dilip kumar ji also referred to one type of fish that is rahu uh, which is being uh, uh, very tasty and being used in the wedding ceremony etc in nepal uh, again some challenges also are there before the aquaculture in nepal uh, he also referred to that only one university is there in nepal that caters the four year uh, fishery program uh, etc i just concerned and certain examples of various schools uh, where aquaculture uh, is being introduced up. Uh, such and uh, many other things are being introduced by this man. Uh, he is in hurry. He has to meet certain foreign uh, persons uh, who are waiting for him. Uh, thank you, uh, Atul, for providing me an opportunity to chair this session. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind support. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Professor Dilip Zha, uh, for yeah. such a nice uh, lecture on agriculture for rural development in Nepal. And also, <coughs> I am thankful to uh, session chairperson. Dr. Basan Satpudhe sir to chair this session and give the session remark. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank I, you. Yes, sir. I forward to next panel session. That is the panel session second. And in this session, firstly, I request Dr. Uh, Vishwas Khandari sir, Principal Kalika Devi Arts, Commerce and Science College to chair the session. Principal Vishwas Kandari sir. In this, uh, yes sir, uh, with the permission of the chair, uh, in this session we have the great acad academician Dr. Viray Kumar Chakrabarti from Bangladesh. Uh, we talk on the role of agriculture for rural development in the Bangladesh. I introduce Professor Viray uh, Kumar Chakrabarti sir. Dr. Binay Kumar Chakravarti, uh, Chakravarti sir. Okay, sir. Yeah, uh, Binay Kumar Chakravarti sir, a uh, fishery yes. scientist and consultants has play an important key role as a researcher and extension worker in the field of aquaculture and fisheries management in the Bangladesh, especially in aquaculture uh, field of mud eel and the mud crab, shrimp and the sea bass, uh, livelihood, Climbing resilient, sustainable management and conservation of wetland resources uh, and biodiversity wetland. He has discovered and developed the technologies of a mud crab, a jewel eye. He has discovered control natural breeding of eel, nursery and culture management of eel. Uh, he, he firstly successfully established the mid-level fisheries manpower fisheries diploma institute institution in Chandpur, Bangladesh and introduced a course curriculum in the Bangladesh Technical Education Board under the, under the project Fishery Diploma Course Implementation Project. He has a vast knowledge of project design implementation and execution of participatory action research. He has also good management, communication, analyc analytical and reporting skill and knowledge on extension motivational motivation and uh, rehabilitation of the fishers of coastal area and other target disaster people. He has also capacity to communicate and build up awareness relation with GVO, NGO, government officials, NGO and allied person on the society. He is also like member of 15 national and international societies organization, about 18 books, six book chapters, more than 64 abstract and 66 scientific papers and other 38 articles are published by national and international public publisher and organization. He is also a light member. Uh, he is also acting as a reviewer uh, more than 20 different international journals and he is also editorial board member of International 
जर्नल ऑफ ओशनोग्राफी एंड एक्वाकल्चर एशियन बायोलॉजिकल रिसर्च फाउंडेशन एंड इंटरनेशनल जर्नल ऑफ एडवांस एकेडमिक स्टडी अवार्डेड लाइफ टाइम अचीव लाइफ टाइम अवार्ड अचीवमेंट इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन बाय सोसाइटी ऑफ बायोलॉजिकल साइंसेस एंड रूरल डेवलपमेंट लाइफ लाइफ टाइम अचीवमेंट अवार्ड बाय ग्लोबल रिसर्च इनिशिएटिव फॉर सस्टेनेबल एग्रीकल्चर एंड अलाइड साइंसेस फॉर आउटस्टैंडिंग कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ फिशरीज सेक्टर ऑन द ऑकेजन ऑफ इंटरनेशनल वेब कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन ग्लोबल रिसर्च इनिशिएटिव फॉर सस्टेनेबल एग्रीकल्चर एंड अलाइड साइंसेस वर्ल्ड एनवायरमेंट एंड लाइवलीहुड अवार्ड इन ट्वेंटी इंटरनेशनल फाउंडेशन फॉर एनवायरमेंट एंड इकोलॉजी ऑन एक्वा एनवायरमेंट ऑन द ऑकेजन ऑफ सेवन इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑफ एनवायरमेंट एंड इकोलॉजी इंडिया ऑल्सो रिसीव डॉक्टर एपीजे अब्दुल कलाम ग्रीन एनवायरमेंट प्रमोशन अवार्ड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन फॉर कमेंडेबल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन द फील्ड ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल प्रोटेक्शन एंड सोशल अवेयरनेस इंडिया Lifetime Award Achievement in Award Lifetime Award Achievement in 2020 for Commendable uh, Contribution in the Field of Science, Society and Environment in Lifetime Award Achievement in 2020 for Commendable uh, Contribution in the Field of Science, Society and Environment in Second International Conference on Environmental and, so uh, and Society. He also received the Scientist of the Year uh, in 2018 for Outstanding Contribution of Fish Biology on the behalf of International Academy of Science and Research India and Guest of Honor from different organization. and fellow awards from calcutta university and bidan chandra krishi vishwavidyalay and other organization so this is all about brief about the professor binay kumar chakravarti sir now i request binay kumar chakravarti sir to put your uh, remark on this occasion thank you sir okay thank you sir uh that is uh, principal uh, kalika devi arts commerce and science college uh, um that is dr vishwas s kandari and convener uh, uh, dr otul uh, otul uh, um, ar uh, chopagar and um, uh, dr uh, tanvir pathan convener and others um, and others um, um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, person and um, uh, thank you to all and um, um, now it is good afternoon maybe maybe good afternoon in my country i want to start my presentation uh, that is uh, the rule of aquaculture for rural development in bangladesh before before starting my presentation the problem is that here is a okay here i want to say this is bangladesh uh, i am from speaking uh, this area uh, if you uh, see my cursor actually before starting my uh, presentation i want to give an idea about the country geographical scenario of bangladesh bangladesh is uh, fully bounded by india except southeast is uh, myanmar and uh, bay of bengal on the south Area of the country one one lakh forty seven thousand five hundred seventy square kilometer. Population is um, huge population in this small country that is one hundred sixty two point one eight million, and growth rate is one point two per annum, and sex ratio is one point two is to one. And important rivers here that is Brahmaputra. Uh, Tista, Podda, Magna. This is Jomuna, and here is Kornafuli. There are six seasons in the in the year, and uh, winter, summer, and monsoon are prominent. Winter begins November and ends in February. Maximum temperature recorded in summer 41 degrees centigrade, and monsoon started in uh, July and stay up to October. <coughs> Now. i want to say about the contribution of fishery sector fishery sector playing a very significant role which contribute 3.52% to the national gdp 26.37% to the agricultural gdp 1.35% to the um, to total export earning it is a very important issue uh, for uh, export earning fish alone supply a per capita fish consumption that is 62.58 gram per day in our daily tariff 
daily dietary uh, requirement. About 12% of the total population of the country is engaged in full or part-time basis for their livelihood. Um, the state of world fisheries and uh, aquaculture, now 2018, Bangladesh land, uh, Bangladesh is third in uh, inland open water cap uh, capture production and fifth in uh, world aquaculture production. That is uh, a fair report. Here I want to say, uh, there is a problem, mute. Uh, here I want to say the different types of capture fisheries in Bangladesh. What type of capture fisheries? That is river and estuary, Sundarban mangrove area, Bill, Kaptai Lake, and wetland. Here, uh, the in case of uh, river, what is happening? 0.32 million metric ton production and 0 0.021 uh, million metric ton production. And Bill only, uh, here I want to say next slide. In case of closed water, um, water bodies, culture, what is happening? There is a uh, uh, water bodies are prone seasonal culture water body that is bower, uh, shrimp, and prone farm, crab, pen culture, case culture. And uh, marine water resources, the um, uh, coastline is 710 kilometers, and the production of marine 0.671 million metric ton. Total production of Bangladesh is four was 4.5034 uh, million metric ton that is the uh, production of last year now i want to say uh, the enriches in fish biodiversity of bangladesh freshwater fish species is 260 freshwater stream species 24 exotic fish species culture now 12 marine fish species 740 and marine stream species 36 tortoise is 22 crab species is 12 now i want to say this is the burning issue i want to say near about 1.80 core people uh, that is 12 percent people are anyhow engaged with um, uh, with uh, the fisheries sector here uh, shrimp and fish farmer 22 percent farm technician or consultant seven percent and feed and uh, healthcare equipment is, uh, is not so of uh, uh, is um, how many percent? Who are hatcheries? Uh, owners are uh, 17 percent. Maril and crab harvester 8 percent. Seafood retailer 10 percent. Processor 9 percent. And others 4 percent. This is 10 uh, percent. Here is the total scenario of the production. What is the production? Here is a crucial scenario. The 1983-84, the production was 0.754 only, uh, metric ton only. And last year, the production was 4.621 million metric ton. It's a very burning issue, I think. Uh, we are in um, developing um, the aquaculture practice in Bangladesh. The regression type is poly polynomial. Here, I want to discuss about the contribution of inland capital fisheries total fish production that is what is happening in case of capture that is uh, uh, open water fisheries uh, the production was 1983 only 0.4716 million uh, metric ton and last year the uh, production was 1.30124 million metric ton and what is happening in case of capture fisheries uh, it is a burning issue uh, for the discussion here the production in 1983-84, the percentage of uh, capture fisheries production was 62.59, and 2007-8, it was 41.36 percent. And last, uh, that is 2020-21, uh, was 27.72 percent. And here the uh, contribution of the um, scenario of the river and estuary production. Here, this is the um bar diagram what is happening 1983-84 it is uh, the production was like um, point, uh, 2 million metric ton up and this is decrease decrease and up, uh, increase 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 again it is increasing day by day but uh, in case of 
Sundarbon. Here it is also the scenario. Uh, the production was lower and it is increasing and uh, it reached up to this point. And uh, the um, statistical analysis is uh, this is a polynomial regression type. And uh, in case of bill fisheries, what is happening? It is also like this. Uh, the production is increasing in bill fishery. This is open water. Um, it is um, uh, however, however, this is called bill fisheries. Uh, the production is increasing. And in case of Kaptai Lake, uh, also the production increasing. It is managed by BFRI, Bangladesh Fisheries Research Institute. Here, uh, uh, Kaptai Lake is situated, situated in uh, very close to Agartala, Mizoram, uh, in uh, India, close to India. And floodplain uh, production is like this. Uh, that is, uh, regression type is polynomial, and the production was you know, once upon a time like uh, 1983 84, uh, the uh, near about 0.2 million metric, metric ton, and it is increased now uh, near about. Uh, 0.8 million metric ton. In case of inland culture total fisheries, what is happening? It is included, I told you, the, it, it is included corn uh, and um, uh, that is uh, our uh, other um, seasonal water body like this. What is happening? Uh, the production was 1983-84, the production was 0 0.11703 million metric ton and it is increased the marvelous increase that is 2.63875 metric, million metric ton. This is the scenario. A positive contribution of inland culture fisheries uh, production. What is happening in that case? In that case, 1983-84, the culture production was only 15.53 million metric ton. In 2007-8, the production was 39.23 million metric ton. And, and uh, sorry, last year, the production was 57.43 million metric ton. It is a marvelous uh, increasing in, uh, pond, uh, 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 not only pen, pond, uh, that is um, close water bodies production is increasing uh, directly. What is happening in, um, oh, sorry, uh, what is uh, in case of uh, pond, this is increasing, this is increasing rapidly and the stretching analysis is poly polynomial and the seasonal culture water body, what is happening? It is also increasing the production. And in case of bower, the, it is another type of water body. It is the production is uh, um, increasing. In case of stream and prone, this is coastal belt area. Uh, the production um, was um, uh, in 1983-84, the production was lower. It is increasing um, just uh, point. 3 million metric ton um, uh, in position now and regression type is logarithmic. Uh, this is the position. Here is the position of, sorry, uh, Madil. That is uh, Monoclas kuchia, eel fish. The production is what is happening. The cultural technique of this production is not practiced till now. I introduced in Bangladesh the culture of Madil in Bangladesh, but the actually it is collected from uh, natural directly. The production is decreasing like this. Uh, the regression type is linear. Uh, this is the situation. What is happening? Mud crab. Mud crab position is it is uh, uh, that, that is uh, um, incre increasing, decreasing, uh, decreasing, and increasing. This is the position. Uh, this is uh, due to, uh, I think, the COVID 19. Uh, this is also COVID 19. Um, and in case of pen culture, what is happening? In case of pen culture, this is the position, uh, the uh, um, uh, increasing, decreasing, this is the position in case of pen culture. Case culture, it is uh, populated and increasing the production uh, system of Bangladesh. Now, I want to discuss an important species that is Pangasia uh, species, Hypothermus uh, molectris. Uh, this is called uh, by Dr. <coughs> Professor um, Dilip Jha. Uh, uh, Dilip, um, these um, Pangasia species introduced in Nepal and they are uh, suffering from mass production of uh, Pangas. But in our country, we are producing. Um, uh, we are producing uh, 80 to 70 um, metric ton per hectare. 
it's the uh, very remar remarkable and exotic species as a exotic species of uh, as a pangas is contributed to 23.24% of total production it's a very remarkable in case of tilapia what is happening it is also contribution um, is 16.64% uh, of total production this the scenario of the production uh, this is due to last year corona virus that is uh, uh, um, covid 19 in case of pangas uh, it is happening uh, so now another question is coming uh, what is happening in case of these two species the food ingredients the food value is increasing day by day the uh, um, cost um, value is increasing but marketing uh, is poor um, the uh, decreasing the um, decrease uh, decreasing the uh, marketing rate of these two species here is uh, i am uh, i want to discuss about the contribution marine uh, total fish production what is happening in 1983-84 the production was 0.16488 uh, million metric ton and last year the production was 0.68124 million metric ton what is uh, happening in case of um, marine fish it is also decreasing for um, decreasing this is the um, uh, bar diagram uh, this is the this is trend last year uh, it is come 14.09% and 1983-84 it was 21.88 million metric ton and now uh, industrial trolling uh, industrial trolling in case of this is the cap capture fishery that is catch this is this is not product uh, can, this, what is happening there the, the, there is a carp uh, it is um, uh, upgrading and uh, uh, here is the point the last year the um, um, catch statistics was higher and in case of uh, uh, artisanal uh, total catch it is also the um, production uh, is increasing that is catch statistics is uh, showing the uh, um, collecting fish is um, um, increasing now i want to discuss the natural spawn in riverine system what is happening in riverine system due to uh, due to uh, ecological change and um, um, uh, climate change um, and um, there are so many reasons um, of man made um, the natural spawn of different rivers um, here is uh, this is this is the uh, scenario of the um, 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 natural spawn it is um, upgrading um, decreasing like this but in case of artificial spawn spawning uh, artificial spawning it is increasing day by day nowadays i think no need more production of um, artificial spawn uh, especially carp spawn now here is marine aquaculture marine developed streams monoptera uh, pinias monodon and pinias indicas culture is medium to high saline water and prone that is macroquian rosenbergi culture is less saline uh, water areas production of mangrove crabs and brackish and marine water fish species like sibas and molers are uh, produced by uh, as a by crop or fellow crop in the shrimp ponds and about uh, 1093 aquatic marine organism including fin fish uh, shellfish shrimps sea water etc are uh, recorded in the uh, bay of bengal marine capture fish has been declining about 5% yearly it is very uh, sad news for us among the marine fishes only shrimps are culture in one side uh, one sign the one um, shore ponds now i want to say socio eco friendly technology applied to enhance the production and biodiversity what is happening in case of aquaculture uh, we are practicing um, for um, uh, this type of aquaculture there is a culture method what is extensive extensive the production is only 1.5 million metric uh, metric ton per hectare uh, semi intensive 1.5 to 4 uh, metric ton intensive 4.2 to 10 metric ton highly intensive 10 uh, metric ton to higher aquaculture what what is the um, um, what is what process is ongoing in bangladesh carp polyculture small scale polyculture cat fish polyculture monoculture that is koi pangas tai sorputi tilapia etc case culture pedic um, fish culture pen culture integrated fish farming uh, this is the aquaculture and the native fish are katla katla uh, lebio ruita kirhana megana megala lebio kalvasu and uh, lebio gonia and puntia sarana and lebio bata this is the native fish and this is the exotic fish 
this is culturing thai pangas this is pangasia suchi uh, big head silver carp grass carp black carp common carp thai solpuri and tilapia and now i want to say diversify the indigenous fish culture that is ompok pagda it is culturing it is induced breeding and um, uh, produce uh, seedling and culturing and in case of mr skebias gulsa it is also um, uh, it is also um, uh, uh, breeding um, artificial breeding produce seedling and culturing and master tanga tangra it is also culturing and um, um, producing um, seedling and um, um, uh, artificial breeding and heteroponus socialis that is the string fish in case of uh, same same thing and clarias batracas this is magur it is also it is native magur not african catfish uh, anabas tetrasinus koi climbing pars it is um, not a uh, native fish it is um, um, uh, higher from thailand and vietnam Uh, it is um, um, culturing and uh, breeding and nursing chana stetiatus it is a vietnam shoal that is uh, uh, striped snake uh, head fish chana stetiatus it is already practicing in my country and am lifering on a mola it is our native fish it is practicing now it is induced breed uh, uh, induced breeding and nursing uh, seed pro producing and culturing and 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 it is very remarkable fish in our country you know that this is a very important fish it is the medicine of um, um, eye disease eye disease that is a resource of vitamin a katla notoptera chitola chitolmas it is also uh, producing um, um, fry and fingerlings and culturing also and culture of pangas and pangas and hypotomnas and um, um, culture of um, uh, yatalapia i i discuss in before Uh, this is very uh, two important fish species it is the fish of poor people of bangladesh the poor people um, purchase it and eat uh, eat them but i want to say the quality of the flesh of the fish is uh, equal to other native fish there is no undoubtedly saying so the poor fish uh, accept it but the rich people doesn't like it integrated fish farming integrated fish farming practice is one of the most important ecological balanced sustainable technologies in the not only bangladesh in the world the technology involves a combination of fish polyculture integrated with fee crop or livestock production and integrated fish farming is highly advanced uh, advantages uh, to uh, improve the economy of production and decrease the adverse environmental impact of farming what is happening in that case uh, agri based fish farming that is fedi cum fish culture is practicing my country this farming is practice in the fedi field for the fedi fields retain water from 3 to 8 months in a year this practice had declined in a recent year due to the use of pesticide uh, to protect high yielding varieties of fedi field uh, it is a burning issue <laughs> but it is in uh, but in particular area of the country uh, it is not Um, um, uh, decreasing it is uh, al already increasing types of practice permanent type pedi grows in middle middle of the pedi uh, here is the um, uh, canal rice field grows serve as feed nurseries to grow fry to fr into fingerling also and in case of in case of agri based fish farming that is central pond type pedi uh, growing area in the perimeter here is the uh, scenery of the uh very fish um, uh, um, farming and lateral trans system here is the lateral trans system and in that case yeah, indian major carp chana species um, uh, that is tilapia clarias batra crab koi uh, silver carp um, uh, uh, like the the fishes are cultured in fedicum fish culturing horticulture come fish farming what is happening there horticulture come fish farming system includes the culture of fruits vegetables and flowers on the embankment of the pond here is the uh, scenario and fruits and vegetable contains various nutritive elements and a research has recommended 85 g of fruits and 300 g of vegetables to consume daily for a person uh, but this is the resource of uh, horticulture come fish farming livestock fish uh, livestock fish farming what is happening poultry cum fish farming this system utilizes poultry dropping <coughs> of fully built up poultry litter for fish culture uh, 
and this fish production obtained is about uh, 5000 kg per hectare per year with 1250 kg chicken meat and uh, seven um, uh, 70,000 number of eggs, approximately uh, 500 to 600 number of uh, per, uh, number per hectare. A bird is reared. And the poultry bird layers are feed with uh, strata, grower, and border feed according to the age. It is um, ready feed, which is produced from the um, different industries. In Bangladesh, this type of fish farming is totally banned because because for uh, safety of uh, human human being, um, uh, this is banned in Bangladesh. Duckcom fish culture, what is happening? The duckcom commonly called a biological aerator. They are reared on the dike of the pond in a low cost house. And this farming is practiced in Haur or Baur area of Bangladesh. And uh, Haki Campbell varieties are found more suitable in this culture, about 300 to 500 number of um, uh, um, duck per hectare of uh, duckling are uh, reared uh, to fertilize uh, the one hectare pond. The duck acts as live aerator and control the aquatic woods, that is, uh, lemna, azula, aquatic insect, mollusks, and tadpoles, etc. Total production is about 3,500 uh, 3, to 5,000 uh, uh, kg fish. And, 18,000 to 18,500 eggs and 600 kg of dark meat is produced from uh, this system. The dark dropping are used as manure in primary production. Uh, it is practicing in my country. Cattle come fish culture, it is also practiced in my country, a common practice all over the world. The cow excreta is most abundant in terms of availability and health cow may excrete over 4,000 to 5,000 kg dung. The beauty of cow manure is lower than the livestock manure. About five to six cows can provide adequate manure for one hectare ponds area. In addition, 9,000 kg milk and about 3,000 to 4,000 kg of fish annually will be produced. Uh, this is a very important um, um, fish farming in uh, Bangladesh. This is a very, very the well, latest um, uh, bottom clean race by upon aquaculture technology uh, is starting in Bangladesh. Highly intensive, the production is minimum 10 to higher metric ton per hectare. Uh, this is the uh, system, this is the round type, this is the circular type. And all the, uh, when uh, every day, uh, the, when the fish supply, uh, 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 supply as a food of fish and the excretory uh, of the um, unused feed um, settled in the center of the pond and there is a pipe and uh, every day it is removed from the pond and um, uh, from the pond and um, uh, placed to another pond. Uh, another pond technology is uh, uh, very, uh, very, uh, another here, uh, without, without feed, the fish is, fish culture is practice. Uh, there is a two opportunity here, bioflock fish farming. Bioflock fish farming is an eco-friendly technique that has served well to provide a solution to many challenges faced in terms of food resource, land, water, and environment. Bioflock ecoculture system is an advanced technique uh, uh, technique for fish farming uh, system where waste materials derived from unused feed, facilities mass, uh, other are converted into microbial protein as food for altered stocks. But the problem is that what is happening, what is happening in that case, uh, um, in that case, the uh, bioflock uh, is uh, starting in Bangladesh uh, just like a hemilionary bashiola. But it is not sustained still now because uh, there are so many difficulties in the system. Now, I want to say techni technology uh, apply in uh, production of Hilsa fisheries, that is Tenilusa Hilsa conservation and management. National fish Hilsa contribute about 12.15% uh, of total production. Hilsa sector contribute on livelihood and coastal fishers. Here I want to say, um, to, uh, um, here 
uh, a huge uh, uh, number of um, uh, uh, fishers are involved in hilsha fisheries in the uh, magna what the um, uh, the rupsha um, uh, different ponds uh, um, uh, lives in different poly, uh, different villages uh, beside the river so it is the very important hilsha produ uh, production increase from 2.792 to 5.5 lakh metric ton between 2007 to 8 to uh, last year growth rate is 4.19 and hills have been declared as a geographical indicator of bangladesh and activities for implemented uh, for production what is the uh, activities conservation of brood hills in peak spawning period the, what, what is the most, most spawning period it is september to october hills have been every uh, month in a year but the peak season is september to october and band period of spawning Four days before full moon, uh, plus one day full moon, seventy uh, one days after full moon. This is that is the month of September to October. Banning illegal catching of jatka and provide food ingredient uh, food support to the fishermen uh, to the um, uh, river um, um, bank of the riverside area. Hello. Here is the scenario of the uh, production of hisa. It is increasing. 2006-7 to last year, uh, there is an increasing tendency and remarkable uh, production was found uh, in Hilsa fishery. In that case, um, uh, here there is a Bay of Bengal. Uh, Bay of Bengal too. This is the river. Uh, this is the Magna. This is the um, uh, another river here. Uh, there are uh, six century June is divided here. This is green color. Uh, um, uh, uh, this is um, uh, green color. This is um, uh, red, um, 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 uh, reddish color. That is blue color. Like this, there are um, uh, six centuries here, and uh, the management is uh, divided into six centuries. And eight months long ban of catching hilsa and jatka and other fishing uh, are prohibited in this zone between March to April. About 40 kilometer stretch of the Andarmanic nursery ground, that is this area, Andarmanic nursery ground. Um, nursery ground is in Potwakali, Kolapara, fishing ban between November to January. And Bangladesh observed that conservation weak across the country, aiming to uh, mobilize the people to conserve the hills of fry. And other activities during this time. Uh, 46,778.08 uh, metric ton rice is distributed to how many Jatka fishermen? 3,1288 Jatka fishermen uh, in 20 districts. They will be close to uh, Bay of Bengal. And uh, in uh, last year, 56,224.88 metric ton uh, distributed to auto fishermen in 20 districts. Oh, sorry, sorry, uh, uh, districts. That is the last year. This is a, uh, uh, 1920. Uh, 20. In the same time, input of alternative income generated distributed to uh, 32,509 fishers families. Hilsa production doubled over the 12 years, but technologies are by taking the government's efforts, including ban and catching boat fish and jatka. Implementation of Janka conservation program, management of century, and implementation of Hilsa spawning protection. This is the Hilsa um, uh, matter. And floodplain management, it is also a good management. Stocking of fingerling, including in, uh, endangered species, uh, species, natural recruitment of carp and other native fishes are declining due to loss of habitat by we know uh, it is all, all this factor is known to us that is filtration of the river pollution over exploitation of fish collection of fry from the natural resource uh, introduction of exotic species without proper research uh, indiscriminate use of pesticide for crop and production this is the main issue to destroy the natural uh, production of, um, of floodplain. To improve the productivity from open water, initiated regular program of releasing fingerlings. Every year in my country, this type of water body, we release the fingerlings. And uh, in 1918, uh, uh, 48,994 metric fish fingerlings were released. 
and extra 0.456 metric ton per hectare was uh, produced in this floodplain. And here is the floodplain as a tube uh, established on the Bill Nursery. Uh, it is another technology. Area of Bill Nursery were 14,770 hectare and number of producing fingerling 120.30 million metric uh, million million not metric ton total fish production of the bill nurseries was uh, the production is 1.102 metric ton per hectare uh, this is the we um, uh, uh, before two years ago as a result extra fish production was increased and endangerous endangered fish species is reappeared in this area establishment of a fish century it is a uh, century to uh, for shelter the different type of species and um, uh, this is the one kind of yeah fish habitat to rehabilitation what is happening restored the fish habitat the government has taken various type of in a sheet name last six year 200 uh 2100 hectare water area are excavated or excavated pro 10 development project and produced uh 3,000 metric ton additional fish per year by implementing this kind of activities. Here, natural breeding ground conservation. And uh, DOF, Department of Fisheries has taken conserve the natural breeding ground of major crops in the river, Howl and Bowl. Howl the river is only Indian major crop uh, natural breeding ground in the country. Declared 40 kilometers of Howl the river as a century and catching of fish is prohibited throughout the year. Six hatcheries is established in the near the bank of the Halda River and collecting eggs and has in the hatcheries and supply throughout the country. During last five years, uh, 600, uh, 642 kg has produced from the uh, collecting eggs and this is distributed uh, to the different parts of the country. This is the uh, scenario of the Halda River. Here is the, this is the up down, uh, up down, uh, um, this is decreasing, decreasing, uh, increasing, decreasing. What is happening? If the ecological factor is not um, uh, support the river of Halda uh, and the brute fish, uh, which is very important issue, uh, is not available in the river, then how will find find how will um, find the production of spawn natural spawn in the river? So we have to ensure this um, um, this uh, factors in the river. Extension of pen farming in potential water bodies. It is the, um, this is called pen. It, it is a, a one type of enclosure of fish culture. The bottom of the enclosure is formed river, meal, and any other water body uh, bottom. Pens are constructed nylon or polythene mesh, nets, traditional bamboo. Here is the, this is the net. And traditional fish production has been increased 0.11 lakh metric ton um, to, uh, 0.124 metric ton last one year ago. And what is happening in case culture, potential water body? Uh, case culture, this is the scenario of case culture. Case is blocked with nets, bamboo, and floors in water. Cases are usually floated in rock. A uh, case is totally enclosed on all but the top side of by mass and netting. Fish cases are used in shallow water with appropriate muddy bottom. Total fish production has been increased. That is 0 0.035 metric ton to uh, 0 0.038 lakh metric ton. Uh, this is the scenario. And now I want to say threats to aquatic biodiversity. What is happening? World population. This is the report of FAO. 0.6.9 billion. Uh, the population, world population will be increased 0.6.9 billion to 9 billion. And global cereal demand will be grow from 2.1 to 3 billion metric ton, a billion ton uh, in 2000, within 2050. So, rise in the population of the country and a great challenge to meet up dietary demand of the general mass people that disappear the species by anthropogenic activities at an alarming rate between 1975 uh, and uh, 2015 occur 1.11 percent species extinction per decade and aquatic species are at a higher risk of extinction than mammals of birds and fresh water and marine ecosystem face similar threats in um, uh, in, uh, in bangladesh uh, or not only bangladesh all over the country uh, world here sorry here 
challenge of fisheries resource fisheries resource is based by with challenges caused by numerous natural and anthropogenic causes such as what is climatic climate change natural disaster environmental pollution industrialization overfishing use of uh, destructive fishing gear pesticide agrochemicals some important national program and biological management technology should be developed for fish production and cbm C is to be applied for uh, water management to restrict the uh, declination of resource and enhance biological management for the production. CBMC, that is, um, uh, uh, that is a um, um, cooperative management policy. What is uh, happening uh, day to uh, COVID-19? Both lives and li uh, livelihood are at risk and income uh, economics impacts will be uh, was felt more and demand and price had, uh, already decreased now it is increased this is a scenario food demand decreases uh, not decreases now it is the slide of before effect of climate change what is the happening changes in air temperature influence changes in water temperature changes in precipitation timing and amount of effect water quality and quantity and timing of flows thermal expansion uh, polar melting causes sea level rise increasing atmospheric carbon dioxide and uh, decrease by uh, ph and sea level rise cyclone intensity uh, intensity and uh, frequency flood intensity and frequency uh, uh, erratic uh, rainfall and drought, river bank erosion, river bank erosion, uh, uh, deeper penetration of saline water, deeper uh, and health and food security. Affect the climate change, uh, change the air temperature, influence changes the water changes, and here thermal expansion and polar melting causes sea level rise. I, I already double slide. Aquatic ecosystem impact, decreasing oxygen concentration and release from sediment, increasing thermal stability, altered mixing pattern in lakes, species moving up in altitude and latitude, changing what is changing, changing species composition, changing seasonality, productivity of plankton, and changing food oil interaction. Increase dissolve, uh, dissolve organic carbons, and altered biochemical cycle and changes probably increase. Uh, change and uh, net primary productivity. This is the scenario. Another issue is for agriculture that is aligned species control. Exotic uh, and aligned species, sorry. Negative impact on environment and economy and uh, human health increase. Predation and competition, uh, disease, habitat, destruction, genetic stock, alternation, and even extinction. Species include plants, fishes, uh, fishes algae, molasses, mollusks, uh, crustacean, bacteria, and viruses. More than 19 species introduced in aquaculture sector in Bangladesh, banning for uh, pirhana and African magur to stop uh, illegal production in hatchery, uh, um, um, hatchery um, the rules and regulation is already applied. Now I want to say what is happening here, this kind of species, that is, that is, um, uh, that is uh, the species, uh, uh, that is uh, species uh, African magur. It is from Thailand. Now this species is found uh, our uh, native river. It is a um, very, very burning issue for uh, fisheries uh, in river, fisheries system in river, because it is a, um, uh, it, it, uh, this piece um, uh, is very, um, Serious for um, our native fish um, uh, that is uh, complete uh, the uh, always with other fish. Here, the scenario of the year annual export of fish and uh, fish product. Uh, this is the burning issue. Uh, we are um, uh, producing fish. Uh, this is that is the formation of frozen simplon, live fish, frozen fish, chill fish, dry fish, salted and dehydrated fish, crab and uh, shim, uh, and uh, fish mow and uh, uh, like this and what is happening why i discuss it the uh, 12 percent of uh, total manpower is engaged all these are frozen shim live fish uh, processing frozen fish processing chill fish processing dry fish processing and we are incoming uh, for an exchange. Uh, 
Now, social aspect assessment. What is the social aspect? Uh, the standard of living, uh, the, the land right. Land right uh, we have established for the uh, fishermen, fishermen, fishers, like uh, who is engaged in uh, fisheries sector. Uh, we have established 17% um, uh, now on uh, living environment, um, uh, we have established 80%. Uh, uh, indigenous right is seven, uh, 66%. And <clears throat> food security, uh, we can um, um, establish. We can um, support the uh, food security is 85%. <clears throat> and relationship, uh, the human, um, uh, human right uh, is um, uh, another issue. Uh, socioeconomic factors is 68%, and gender aspect 70%, uh, health and safety is 88%, land is 70%. Here, now I want to say upgradation of <coughs> education status between 2001 to 2020, uh, 2019, 80. What is happening there in case of education, uh, we can uh, we can um, uh, establish the right of uh, fishers, fishermen, uh, like uh, the person who are engaged in the fisheries sector. Um, in 2001 and two, this is the blue color. What is the uh, position? That is illiterate was 50% uh, and primary level 32% um, yeah, and secondary was 16% and um, um, uh, undergraduate 2% and this was not, but in 2010 and 11, uh, the this is the red 32 percent. Uh, this uh, uh, decrease and uh, this is increased 22 percent. Uh, 22 percent. This is 20 percent. That is 16 percent. That is 8 percent and 20 percent. And last year, uh, the, this is the whole scenario. That is illiterate 9 percent. Uh, primary uh, level is 20 percent and secondary level is 24 percent. And undergraduate 22 percent and graduate 15 percent and master's level uh, is uh, um, uh, five percent. In case of housing status between 2001 and two to 2019-20, what is happening? Uh, it is uh, safe water. In case of safe water, uh, no safe water. Uh, 2001 to 55 uh, percent, uh, there was no safe water, and uh, uh, yeah, 21 percent was. Um, um that's a problem um and and uh, in case of uh, um uh, in case of um, last year what is happening um, there is no no um, uh, no um, no um, facilities of uh, drinking water but it is increased this is increased 35 percent 33 percent and uh, 32 percent um this is the scenario and in case of drinking water uh, facilities. This is the um, uh, upgradation, uh, also upgradation. Uh, 2001 and two. the scenario was this, 50%. And um, um, uh, here is a, the, some um, um, the categories. And, and uh, 2010 and 11, uh, this is the um, um, reddish color. And, uh, uh, um, uh, this is this is the scenario of the um, this scenario and last year's scenario is a blue color. Uh, this is the forty two percent. Um, they, est they established the right uh, forty two percent um, of um, drinking water um, in case of drinking water. Salin sanitary facilities uh, in case of that uh, they can establish. Uh, I think um, Kacha Kacha that is sixty two percent sixty. Um, 37 percent and 7 percent and semi pakka that is um, uh, 27 percent 36 percent and 41 percent last year um, uh, 19, um, last year and pakka what is 11 percent uh, chilo um, was 11 percent and uh, middle middle stage uh, it was 27 percent and last year 52 percent and in case of health facilities um, Health facilities that is um, uh, um, village doctor it was the fifty nine percent and district uh, yeah, was uh, level was eight percent and uh, in blue color uh, that is middle middle position is thirty seven percent and it was eleven percent uh, district level and uh, community level upadala that is thana level 
and in case of 19 uh, last year uh, this is uh, the the tendency of um, the um, tendency of uh, going to doctor the commodity level is increased uh, thana level is increase district level is increase in case of electricity facility uh, it is a um, modern uh, indicator of uh, um, socio economic development here um, once uh, we know that hurricanes uh, that is uh, 2001 to uh, 2 this was the scenario um, um, candle like this solar panel like this electricity like this and mid level is for uh, this this is the scenario this is the scenario and final uh, we, last year in case of hurricane it was uh, now uh, decrease and uh, candle already it, it is also decreasing and uh, solar panel is increasing uh, and electricity is 60% uh, covering here occupational status are between the um, um, by this time fish farming ability what is uh, 2001 and 2 uh, was still, uh, that was uh, that is red color 30 percent and uh, business uh, 26 percent and others 22 uh, percent and others 20 uh, percent and um, last year the position was the fish farming the ability is increased 48 percent and business to 23 percent it, it is going to decrease they are interested to uh, establish um, fish farming and also another year and others uh, it is uh, decreasing. This is the same. Now I want to say, <coughs> fish as a tree for sound uh, health. Uh, there, what is it? Omega-3 fatty acid prevents or reduce corona heart disease. And fatty acid minimizes corona uh, or lower triglyceride level uh, uh, yeah, uh, for blood pressure. Fish is great sources of protein. Who is maintains healthy muscles, organs, and blood vessels? Protein supports cell division, hair growth, and hormone uh, singling. Fish is rich is iodine and direct function on human thyroid gland and control things like appetite and immune system. Fish is a good source of nutrients like vitamin D, vitamin B12, iron, phosphorus, niacin. A standard three ounce of Serving a back herring fish content, this is the herring fish uh, content, calories 173 and protein 20 gram, fat 10 gram, carbohydrate less than 1 gram, fiber um, fiber 1 gram, and sugar less than um, 2 gram. Here's the scenario, and I want to say another scenario of a uh, one fish that is called Kutia monotras Kutia. What is happening in that case? It is known to um, uh, uh, basically, uh, it is very popular fish in uh, e uh, East Asian countries, and even in India, Eastern uh, uh, that is uh, hilly area countries, um, uh, this fish is very popular. What is the tribal people belongs to in our country? This is called Garo, Hazong, uh, Sawatali, and Koch Rajbongshi community. This fish is to uh, therapeutic and traditionally used as a treatment of weakness, anemia, uh, asthma, um, hemorrhoids, and uh, uh, diabetes. Direct consumption of fresh blood, cure weakness, anemia, and uh, asthma, and from cooking the flesh alone, cure uh, anemia, pulse, and diabetes. Content of exogram of raw flesh of this species was 18.7 gram protein, 0.8 gram fats, 2.4 gram carbohydrate, and 180 gram calcium and uh, essential amino acid is found um, is there align uh, arginine uh, glycine uh, histi histidine leucine and methionine a tremendous demand of kuchia is in the international market for nutritional uh, importance in my country now i want to uh, say about the recommendation the action plan efforts for saving the stock of fish to upgrade the socioeconomic condition uh, in all the indicators should be developed uh, for their for the for them implement hilsa fishery management technology in all the open water bodies and this ecosystem of wetland and the river declare the basins of the river as a conservation upgrade management for the conservation and control of our 
uh, exploitation and illegal fishing and prevention of harvesting and brood fishes and ensure sufficient water flow in the river, control natural and uh, um, anth uh, anthropogenic causes. Uh, rice fish farming is more uh, uh, remunerative uh, than rice soil culture in terms of net returns and benefit rest, um, cost ratio. And continue fish production, maintaining fish supply chain um, to overcome the um, uh, uh, decrease condition of COVID-19 and keep international market um, uh, to open uh, for, in uh, government level. Uh, this is the uh, recommendation. Uh, now I want to say our great leader, uh, Mm, the speech of great leader, let us together create a world that can eradicate poverty, hunger, war, and human suffering and achievement goals, peace, and uh, the humanity. This is the uh, speech of our father of nation. Uh, we feel the uh, every word of the sentence, uh, what to do for the future. Uh, thank you. Thank you to all. Uh, I have tried to uh, discuss um, uh, Mm, the all the sectors uh, of the fish, fisheries and aquaculture and thank you uh, to all the audience to hear my uh, lecture presently again thank you thank you to all hello 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 ha huh? yeah 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 thank you sir for your wonderful lecture on uh, on the role of aquaculture uh, for rural development in bangladesh uh, if if any uh, questions Audience, I request you to ask. I request uh, the session chairperson, uh, Principal Dr. Vishwas Kandare sir, Principal Kalika Devi Arts, Commerce and Science College, Shirur Kasar, District Beat, to give a session remark. Principal Dr. Vishwas Kandare sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, today, International Conference and Aquaculture for rural development. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, today, uh, to one and all. First of all, we have organizing committee of international conference in aquaculture for the rural development. Organized under between Department of Zoology, uh, other section samstha Kalike Devi Arts and Commerce Science, Chirur Kasa District Bid. Abilitated Dr. Bhavasar Ambedkar Marathwada University, uh, Maharashtra, and uh, Department of Zoology of the late Arts, Commerce, Science College, Tonpet, District of Abilitated SRP University. Uh, Department of Zoology, Dada Patil, Rajade Arts, Science, and Commerce College, and in Pathari District. Ahmednagar, affiliated. Savitri Pune, Pune University, Pune. Very nice research persons must be in Adhatika Amrath Mosso. Is then say Shuru Shuru organized Kia in three college departments. Very nice. Must be Milia College and Science Management uh, College Bead, affiliated Dr. Bhav Sambetkar Maratwada University. We would like to welcome all delegates, participants for the inter international events. Dear my friends and delegates, Angar and Maltunitians remain among us the most devising problems facing the world poor the pure state of food insecurity reports stats that developing nations are not getting enough food to lead normal early and active lies food demand and in particular the demand for fish has con uh, continued to rise and it is the 
forecast that expanding pollution and changing eating habits will make developing of food output imperative the next 30 years this demand mainly has to be met from local food uh, production system aquacultures people both in sector itself as well as support service it also generates in income and the price for must be commodity duties fall fish prices are the expected to rise reflecting the impact between demand of the su supply with this i would like to extend my sense of the gratitude this gratitude to guys to guest please allow me to express my sense appearance to very nice this uh, conference international conference one day aquaculture for the rural developments uh, resource persons very good persons or uh, chief organizer rajdar kar temkar dr vasant satpute sir that mohammed ilyas fazil sir governor atul chopkar sir dr santosh rankham sir dr in my college colleague tanvir patan sir dr sairi Ab abdulin in my Uh, go, uh, governor, very very nice. Uh, this uh, resource persons uh, conference uh, just topic rule uh, role of the agriculture for the rural development in Bang Bangladesh. Very nice re resource person. Um, very present. Uh, much be information uh, in zoology departments. Very nice. all all the before must be like uh, i take my leave of i would like to remain you epcl our moderators to stick to our time schedule and not to late any sessions i sincerely i hope you will enjoy today event networking thank you for your participants and delegates and resource persons governor uh, organizer thank you very much uh, thank you principal dr vishwas kandari sir for your kind words and give the session remark of the plenary session second i also thankful to vinay kumar chakravarti sir uh, to give the information about role of agriculture for rural development uh, before conclude and before vote of thanks i would like to uh, request all of you to start your cameras so i i take a snap for our set to start everyone to start the cameras uh, before vote of thanks i wish i i wish that today is a gurudev ravindranath tagore birth anniversary so i wish you all the same and this conference dedicated to gurudev ravindranath tagore sir now i request uh, dr sairi abdullah sir convener of this international conference on aquaculture for rural development to give vote of thanks hello good afternoon all dear parents dear participants Firstly I must thanks to almighty for his mercy and help on behalf of entire organizing committee I must thanks to the chief guest professor dr kusum arunachalam for her vital time from her busy schedule to grace this conference then I would also thank all the speakers professor kusum arunachalam dr dilip kumar jha and dr binay kumar chakravarti i also thank to our patrons 
ऑनरेबल श्री अप्पा साहेब रजाड़े ऑनरेबल श्री परमेश्वर कदम ऑनरेबल श्री जयदत अन्ना से सागर एंड ऑनरेबल मिसेस खान सबीहा बेगम फॉर इनकरेजिंग अस एंड बिलीविंग अस इन फ्रेंड्स एनी कॉन्फ्रेंस इज नॉट पॉसिबल विदाउट गुड ऑडियंस आई मस्ट थैंक all the faculties students participants and principals and conveners for making this conference a great success i also thanks all the colleagues who extended support for making this event a success thanks again ah uh, thank you uh... Dr. Uh, Sayyid Abdullah sir, for your kind words. So, with the permission of the chair, I conclude concluded that uh, this international conference is over. Thank you for your kind uh, stay with us. I put the feedback link on the chat, so you can you can give the feedback, so you can receive the e certificate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir.